Go live. Hey guys, Rich here. Welcome back to the RC Informer YouTube channel. Uh, guys, if you can, uh, just give me a, uh, a thumbs up if you guys are getting the audio okay or if there's any problems. Good to see everybody here. Got uh, 15 guys in here already. Gavin uh, Wilkins. Uh, Kari, I can't stay awake anymore. It's nearly 2 a.m. here in Western Australia. Hey, sorry, man. <laughs> I'm trying to do this so more people can get in on it, but I guess you can't get in there everywhere. But hey, there's always the rerun, so you'll be able to watch it on the RC Informer YouTube channel anytime. Curtis Curtis is there. Uh, let's see. I'm here for the fall. I've had mine a week and just put it together a few hours. Really nice jet. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Uh, let's see. Nice jet. Mine had a couple of dings and blemishes, but we'll fix it. Okay. Well, uh, report those to blemishes to anybody that, uh, you know, you might've got or whoever you bought it from, I should say really. So, um, uh, but, um, uh, and let them know. So, cause that kind of shouldn't happen. Mine came nearly perfect. I got it kind of parked right over there, as you can see. And we're going to, we're actually going to talk about kind of towards the end, cause this is mostly an unbox, but, uh, but, but all that's going to be here. We're going to cover a lot of stuff. I got some pictures for everybody and stuff, so we'll take a look at that. Uh, let's see, uh, BD Tennessee's in, in the house here, checking in, Air Hammer's here. Well, it's a great day to be alive, I know. The sun's still shining when I close my eyes, that's good. Mike Bird's here. Uh, yeah, shout out where you're from again, if you, if you want to. Uh, Les Burnham's from Essex, England. E e Essex, England. Uh, Neil White's from the UK, all right, he's in town, let's see. Pilot Jerry RC, good afternoon, Rich. Let's see, uh, I got 25 guys in. We'll wait for some more people. I got an itinerary, <laughs> so I've got some stuff here for everybody, so we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll check that out. We'll get into that. In fact, uh, I'm gonna make a mod to that real fast. Get some of the stuff off of there I don't need on there, or shouldn't have on there. Let's see, <laughs> get rid of that. So how's everybody doing? Has anybody got any uh, kind of questions off the bat? Uh, Victor RC Jets is here. I'm going to show his comment. I don't think it's probably too bad, hopefully. Um, he said, boys, that doesn't sound bad. Let's see. Um, Reckham Roy's here. Hello, Rich from the uh, Pacific Nor Northwest. Um, Pilot Jerry says, you got his Rafael. Waiting to hear what you have to say. I, I love the plane. I mean, it's awesome. It's Probably one of the coolest, nicest built, curviest models. You've probably seen it around at Fit and Finish. It's awesome. Um, I made some changes to mine because I wanted to just improve it from what it was, make it a little more usable. I mean, but a lot of guys are customizing it, so there's there's actually a lot of options you can do on the um, on the uh, on the airplane. So, um, and I have some changes that I made. So. Uh, I pinch the sticks and thumb the views. Yeah, all right, that's Rich Webb. Uh, all right, 30 guys here. Wayne's RC in Minnesota. Uh, Shadow Ops, howdy, putting speakers in my truck from Idaho. All right, awesome. Um, very good. Yeah, guys, a lot of times will do things while we're doing live shows and stuff. I grabbed myself some, some food. I was on the phone when I realized, oh, I got 10 minutes for my live show. I gotta, gotta get to you guys here. So it's been a busy week. Uh, the beginning of my week, I was mostly in a simulator, having engine failures and fires and wind shear and all kinds of stuff. So I've been busy at the beginning of the week doing a lot of uh, simulator training. So I've been really, really swamped. I got a message from somebody here. So, so I'm trying to Tetris in all these uh, live shows and shooting video as best I can for you guys and everything. So uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Air Hammer says, it's on. That's right. It's on. Uh, Let's see, who else we got? Uh, Teresa Cox here from Erie, uh, Erie PA. All right, that's good. Mike Bird, yeah, we know he's, uh, he's uh, coming. Ian Bowen's from London. All right, awesome. EQRC's in the house. Eric Quinn is here, guys. Check out EQRC. He's always doing all kinds of things in the house. He's got lots of stuff going on. So um, anyway, um, uh, I'm going to start off with everybody just with a couple of uh, kind of announcement type stuff while maybe more people get in. Um, but um, wanted to talk about some of the events coming up. Uh, again, thanks everybody for coming to the, to the show, watching all the videos, you know, liking, subscribing, sharing the videos, uh, hitting the like button and the notification bell. Uh, that all supports us guys. And then using our links 
to purchase. Again, guys, I'm, uh, my channel, I don't ask people for super chats and stuff. We're appreciated, but I'd rather you guys, you know, I, I, I put this stuff out there so you guys have good info. And then if you guys buy something, if you use my link, it supports the channel. We appreciate that, you know, me and Steve. So uh, anyway, but I'm always keeping it a free channel for everybody. So that, that's the deal. Um, real quick, guys. Uh, once again, I was kind of not looking at the right thing, but is, is everybody sound good? Give me a, give me some thumbs up. Let me make sure the sound quality is good. I got a good bar down here that's showing me it's good, but if you guys can give me some thumbs up or say sound is good, you know, you got good, good audio coming out. I just want to make sure everybody can hear me before I start talking about all kinds of stuff that, that nobody can <laughs> make sure everybody can hear me. So, um, go ahead and throw that in here, guys, if you can, let me know you guys are receiving me. Okay. And uh, I'm going to send uh, a message myself. Uh, hey, guys, since that's what I say all the time. Okay, let's see if that goes through. So five by five, people are telling me the sound is good. Save the Humans is here. Very good. We got some serious unboxings to show you guys here. So, um, oh, I guess I just threw that up. So, okay, well, anyway, there you go. I threw the first flyer up here, folks. This is a flyer I made, okay? Um, it is it is like air show season now. That's one of the things I want to talk with everybody about. We're going to a lot of events if we can. A lot of stuff's being canceled, but stuff is still going. And I just found out from the guys at Seth, Bob Bernard, um, at Hodges Field, um, we found out about a month ago that Seth is going on. So you can see here I made a flyer. Um, and I put, I just made this myself, guys. This isn't an event flyer. I made this. I'll send it off to Bob and, you know, uh, we're going to post it. So if you guys want to propagate our post around, we get it up there. Appreciate that. We're trying to get as many people to the field as we can. So I made this flyer. You can see um, it's CEF 2021, April 26th or May 1st. All the info is right here. You can register at CEFweek.com. Um, you know, it's Mac Hodges Field, Anderson, Georgia. This is a great time. If you guys can come out to this, um, if anybody's hearing this, you know, come on out to this event. It is going to be awesome. I think there's going to be a lot of people at this one, mostly because you know, Joe Nall got canceled, which is supposed to be the following, I think the following week or a week after or something. So I think Seth might be a little bit bigger. So, you know, um, I'm bringing in all the stops. You can see if you look at the, this way, <laughs> if you check out here from top to bottom, Flex Innovation is, is like the main sponsor of this thing. Horizon Hobbies is going to be there too with all their E-Flight and Spectrum stuff. So, um, and then of course, I'm going to be there representing a lot of these companies. So I'm going to have a lot of planes for you guys to see. So, you know, I'll be showing, I'll be showing a lot of FMS stuff, rock hobby. I'll be there showing off Bitco airplanes, Dynam, Hobby Zone, Eros, even the foam tack guys got in on it. I contacted them. And so there's going to be a lot of giveaways. So there's a real good likelihood that, you know, guys come and, you know, you get raffle tickets and stuff. You're going to win something because Flex is bringing stuff. Horizon's bringing stuff. I'm going to be bringing for you guys to the event, thanks to the sponsors above. I'm going to be, and, and you guys for, for watching the channel and supporting me. Well, I'm going to have at least four, maybe more airplanes for the giveaways there. So FMS is throwing, throwing at least an airplane in and some stuff. Um, we got uh, Hobby Zone and Eros. They're throwing in an airplane. And then kind of newly visiting everything, Banana Hobby over there. I can't you always get this wrong. All the way on the other far end of the screen. Um, you know, Banana Hobby's gotten back into the mix, as you guys know, with these really nice 105-millimeter uh, jets and the 1,100-millimeter Warbirds, like the Spitfire here, you know, the Osprey and the, um, uh, the Aggressor and the, the planes I'm going to show you today. Uh, Banana Hobby is throwing in two airplanes for this event, okay? So, so I'm going to be there with a lot of airplanes. The Beacon Adhesives guys, uh, Foam Tack, you know, they're going to be supplying us with glue, so I'll have some giveaways for there for everybody. Um, Ernst Manufacturing, you can see Roaring Top. Roaring Top, they're probably going to be selling batteries and stuff too. So, you know, let me know about that, but uh, and and we'll, we'll we'll work with you guys on that. A uh, buddy of mine, and I put right below. If you can see my logo there, here I can never get that right. Uh, right below my lo logo, John from Just Wing It on YouTube. He's going to be there too. So check out his YouTube channel as well. He and I'll be probably helping each other film a little bit, you know, and get some video for everybody. So we'll do some live stuff there and everything. So. So that is the Ceph event, guys. So, um, you know, I'm going to bring a, a lot of stuff to both of these, uh, to these two events. The second event that I'm going to be at, which is right after this, and I'll throw that up here right here so you guys can see that one. Let me throw that up. Um, that's going to be the, uh, the Pilot Ryan all-electric fly-in. Okay, that's down at Imperial RC. And what happened with that was is 
is the, uh, the uh, you know, Joan all got canceled, bef- you know, the couple which is going on, supposed to go on a couple weeks after Seth. Um, but because of that, you know, uh, Wesley and him, I guess they, they kind of came up with the idea to fill the gap with, uh, since people are probably off, fill it with a fly-in. So, so you know, they went ahead and created this, um, you know, it's sort of an influencer event. You know, you can see uh, my logo's on there. I'll be there, Mary Boozer, RC Air Marshall. And then, again, a ton of giveaways. So thanks to you guys once again, and thanks to my sponsors up ahead, thanks to you guys, um, we're going to have a lot of giveaways there as well. It's going to be almost like a, a duplicate of Ceph as far as giveaway stuff. So Banana Hobby's giving us two planes for the event. FMS is going to give us at least a plane, probably some other stuff. Hobby Zone's throwing in an airplane. Uh, I know Horizon, if, uh, I talked with Jerry um, at Imperial RC and... Um, you know, he's got all the info now for Horizon. I kind of helped hook them up a little bit. But they always, Horizon usually always sponsors that. So they're going to have giveaways. There's going to be stuff from BitGo and, um, and, and so forth. So these are all the sponsors. Guniac. Oh, I met, forgot to mention Guniac too. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to see with all that stuff in there. But um, anyway, um, uh, Guniac, Ray, uh, he's, he's donating like two afterburners, I think. Um, uh, I got to look at it. I think it was like two, two afterburners for events. So we're going to have airplanes, glue, afterburners, airplane stands. There's going to be a lot of giveaways. Thanks to you guys, like I said, and, 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 uh, and all the sponsors you see listed ahead. They've all really liked you guys coming, me showing off this stuff. And it's turned out to be a really nice thing. So, so two events back to back. This is uh, at Imperial RC, as you can see, May 12th through the 16th. 2021. Check it out at imperialrcclub.com. You know, so, so you know, stay tuned. We're we're gonna we're gonna be at these two events coming up soon. They're both about a, coming about a month, starting about a month away. So, you know, if you guys can make it down to these things, you know, it, it's gonna be cool to 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 see these things. Um, both are probably gonna be big events. I think Seth will probably be maybe a little larger because it's maybe a little more well known. But Imperial's all the way down here in Florida, and we'll obviously we'll have the weather for it. So. Um, Ceph is an awesome field. Grass, you know, it's kind of like Woodstock for uh, electric airplanes. So anyway, um, but uh, yeah, guys, come one, come all, check it out. I got lots, like I said, we're bringing lots of free stuff for everybody. Uh, Air Hammer just made a comment. I'm noticing he says, Wing It is a good dude. Yeah, John's a good guy at Wing It, so check out his channel. You know, he's got good stuff. And he and I will be working together. We'll be out there filming some stuff. Um, uh, Let's see, Jeff in Lower Alabama's here. Hey, Rich and everyone. Uh, Gavin Wilkins says he's up to 45 planes now. So uh, let's see, Stinger's a great jet, yep. Uh, let's see, what's up, Rich? That's Nate, Nate's in the house. So, and we'll talk about the events again, guys. We'll get to all these events at the end or towards the end. I'll be, I'll, we'll talk about them during the, 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 the whole thing. So, um, but in the meantime, since we talked about events, does anybody have any questions about the events or anything that's going to be happening there? Because we are going to be there full force. Uh, Amy and I are going uh, with her two kids, so we're going to have an RV and a ton of planes. So just to name off a few, I will have there, and I had to write it down because I can't remember this stuff. Uh, from FMS, we're going to have the Rafale, the big Corsair, the CJ6, the ASW17, probably super easy, maybe one or two more. And from Horizon Hobby, guys, I will have for you guys a Draco there to fly, to see and fly. So I'll be demoing the Draco at both of these events. So, you know, come on out and see it. I think the plane's just being released about maybe two days before that event. So we will have it there for everybody to demo. So come see, you know, Draco there. It's pretty darn awesome. It's pretty sweet. Uh, um, yeah, I've seen it up close. I've, 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 I've got it to show you guys. So we'll be doing that when the time comes. So, um, uh, but I'll have Draco there. I'll have the FW-190. I'll have uh, probably the F-18 and the V-1200. Maybe a couple other Horizon planes. We'll see. Um, I'm going to be loading the trailer with this stuff. But Anna Hobby, guys, we'll have the big L-39, V-22, the Spitfire, the two T-28s that I'm going to show you guys here today in the box. We'll get that out of here. Um, and I'll have the Aggressor probably too, which is up here, and the P-40N. So um, the Aggressor is a plane that it's kind of an FPV deal, but it's also really a sport jet. And they're selling it as a sport jet. And I'll have, I'll have videos of this out. Um, and in fact, let me get rid of the uh, flyer. Let me get rid of the Seth flyer so you guys can see this thing. This thing's pretty neat. I have not flown it yet. I got it out of the box, filmed it unboxing. So stay tuned. I'll have that for everybody. Coming from Banana Hobby, folks. So check this out. Uh, very neat. Uh, I've, I've been hearing that it flies fantastic as a sport plane. So 
you know, anyway, stay tuned because we'll have build videos of this out here real soon. You know, I've got, uh, I still got to wire up the receiver because I just got this together and, uh, and just filmed it, but it'll, it'll take big batteries. I'm pretty sure it's a, pretty sure it's a 4S airplane, um, pusher prop in the back, you know, got a nice, you know, hand grip back here for hand launching. You just got to watch your hand on the prop when you throw, you don't strike your hand, but very cool airplane. You know, you, you set it up as a, I think a, like a Delta wing or a flying wing or a, oh, I'll talk about that as I set it up. I don't want to get too much into that, but very cool airplane from Banana Hobby along with all these other ones, guys, that we're going to be showing you. Fit and finish on this was awesome. It's really slick. It's very clean. Really, really nice, uh, really nice airplane. Forward swept wing. I'm dying to see how this flies, you know, as a, uh, as a sports ship. So we'll, we'll be getting this out there. So, you know, again, this airplane, the Spitfire, the P-40 Flying Tiger, all that stuff, uh, all available at Banana Hobby. So, you know, check them out there. And let me see if that'll stay up there, hopefully. There we go. Got tons of Ernst stands up there, you can see, holding everything up there. So, uh, let's see what we got. Uh, uh, can't wait for my Draco. Yeah, it's awesome, guys. The detail on that thing's pretty awesome. Uh, let's see. Ceph 21 sounds like an awesome t event. Yeah, it should be. I think it really is going to be. And I'm, I'm, I pulled out all the stops, like I said, to get everybody there. And I brought in, I don't know how many sponsors, FMS with Rock Hobby, uh, Dynam and Bitco, Hobby Zone with Arrows, Beacon Adhesives, Guniac. Again, we're going to have a couple free giveaway afterburners for everybody. Um, Lane's Planes is going to be here. He makes some really nice homemade stuff. He makes the Norman airplanes, which are awesome. So he'll be there. Altitude Hobbies, Roaring Top selling batteries there. Um, Helen's Hobbies, j and Aerospace, and TGK Connectors. They do a lot of, uh, you know, just all various connectors that you guys might need their adapters and stuff. And then on the other side, of course, you know, well, Flex, Horizon, E-Flight, Spectrum. Uh, and I'll be there showing you guys banana hobby stuff. You know, I'll be showing you all that stuff. Blitz RC. I got some JP fans and some things. So Zap Glue, of course, and Atlanta Hobby. So a lot of, lot of stuff there. Float Field. So we're going to be flying float planes. It's going to be seven days of coolness, man. It's going to be a lot of fun. So if you guys can come, you know, come on out and hang out at the tent with us, man. We're going to have a lot of stuff to show everybody, a lot of flying to do. We can fly together. It'll be, it'll be really fun. So, uh, anyway, let's see, let me scroll down here a little more. Uh, yeah, someone said put a 10 by 10 on your, uh, V1200 adds 20 miles an hour. I've heard that. Yeah. The factory even said that or, you know, horizon, but it tends to overheat a bit. So you got to kind of take it easy. You got to modulate your throttle, but yeah, you can get away with it. Um, um, what's the matter? 145 in enough. <laughs> so, uh, uh, let's see, uh, fantastic looking Draco, uh, for 30 days, uh, what does it say? Shadow ops. Uh, oh, he said, yeah, for 30 days, no influencers supposed to do reviews on the Draco or promote it. Yeah, we're, we're allowed to talk about it. In fact, you know, one of the things that I am going to tell you guys about the Draco that Horizon asked me to actually let you guys know about is that when you start to get them, kind of disregard the manual in there. Apparently the Draco manual has lots of mistakes. So download the one that's online. That's going to be the most current one. And by the time it gets released, um, you know, the Horizon guys are saying that um, they, they should have any mistakes in there made, but that's going to really be the correct manual you're going to want to, you're going to want to check out. So, so again, guys, uh, that's something they had asked me to pass on to you guys. Um, so, you know, just keep in mind when you get your Dracos, the manual, the written manual within the box has a lot of mistakes apparently. So just disregard it, get the manual online. And that by the time the plane gets released, it's supposed to be the most, um, uh, the most current version and without hopefully all the mistakes in it. So, so again, be sure to check that out. So, uh, yeah, I'm dying for the, for the Draco. It looks really cool. Um, uh, so, uh, shadow ops RC said, correct. Uh, let's see, what do we got? 44 guys in here. Uh, the aggressor is made by the same company that builds the blitz L 39. Yeah, yeah, it is. I, th I think, um, let's see, looking forward to Draco. I'm registered with a room reserve, looking at meeting everybody. That's Jeff in lower Alabama. Yeah, Jeff, come on out to the tent, man. We'll be there. We're going to have a lot of banners. I mean, we're going to have FMS banners, my RC informer pirate flag banner, like you see here. I can't get that, ever get that right. <laughs> it's going to be there. Um, uh, but uh, we'll have, we're going to actually have for you guys, uh, look for the Hobby Zone banners, Arrows banner, 
uh, probably have a foam tack and beacon banner. I'm gonna have a bunch of banners, aero foam, banana hobby. I'm gonna have a bunch of stuff for everybody to see. So, so, so look for a lot of flags and that'll be around my tent. So I'll have a 20 by 20 canopy. Uh, I'm gonna be right next to the Horizon guys. I'll probably be flying some of the stuff with the Horizon guys too. So they're bringing kind of a, a group, uh, they're bringing a crew there to, to demo stuff too. So I would imagine they're gonna have the Draco too and all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, always use, uh, Jeff in Lower Alabama says, always use the online manuals. Yeah. They're, they're, they're usually um, 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 uh, the most current if you, if you look at the online one. So anyway, that's something they wanted me to let you know. So Draco manual, disregard the one in the first couple boxes that are coming. Go to the online manual. You'll be good. Uh, Gary Bram just showed up. Hi, Rich. Greetings from Ireland, from Pilot Gary. All right. Thanks for coming from Ireland. That's cool. Yeah. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming. That is awesome. Um, and uh there we go. We got about 50 guys here. Not bad for the beginning of the day. So uh, let's see what we got. Um, I am going to throw up. Let me get rid of, not going to throw up, but I'm going to get rid of, uh, let's get rid of that banner. Let me see if I can go to, I'm going to pull up. We're going to get to the unboxing here right quick here. And uh, a couple unboxings actually. Uh, let me see if I can get to, let me throw a couple things up here. Um, and in fact, uh, actually, you know what? Maybe we'll just go to the unboxing. Uh, yeah, you guys ready? Let's just get on to the, uh, the unboxing and stuff. Uh, let, let's, let's get to it. Um, everybody's ready. Let's go. I grabbed some snacks and stuff. I'll put these, put these somewhere else. Put those on the side. I may need a snack here as we go. Let's see what else we got. Um, all right, guys. Banana Hobby in the house. Okay, if you guys check out right below in the little description or not, not the, well, right at the bottom of the screen here. We're going to show you the unbox of the T28 1100 millimeter Jolly Roger, the the uh, the training basically the VT um, uh, training squadron VT5, the red and white um, that they have, and um, uh, the P40N Warhawk as well. So really nice, all three to four cell powered airplanes, so you can fly them on four. Um, I hadn't flown the 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 the, the what you call it yet. The um, I hadn't flown the T28 yet. I, I've I've flown the P40 and it's it's totally awesome. So um, uh, but, but let's get this out of here. Let me grab a couple of my remotes. I got remotes everywhere. Um, and I don't want to put that on there. Let's put this back here. Got a lot of stuff happening here, guys. All kinds of things going on. Oh, here, since I got this, I'm going to show you this real quick. Spectrum radio case. This thing is so, so cool. It comes with a single, comes with a single radio, uh, deal in there. Um, but, uh, you can buy and you can get separately, um, um, the dual. So you can see how nice this is. You can put tools, batteries, and uh, uh, this is what I'm keeping my radios in now. So I've got an NX6 and NX10 in there, all my tools and stuff. Uh, but the dual foam piece is what you can add in there because um, I got my, uh, I have my uh, my planes on this thing. Um, but you can add the the dual thing. And in fact, um, you know what I'll do is I'll back out real fast. We're gonna get to the unbox here right away. Um, this is what the insert looks like. I'll show it to you. I gotta walk over here to get it. Sorry, guys. Um, this is the one that comes with it. You'll see right here. This is a. Uh, here, let me let me move over here. A little easier here. Walking on eggs here. All I gotta do, guys, pull one wire out, man, and and the show's over. <laughs> so, but this is what it comes with. Is a is a foam insert that you can see here for one radio. And actually a ton of batteries. So you get these at Horizon, it's pretty sweet. But this is the foam insert that comes in and out of this thing to put one radio and a bunch of batteries and all that kind of stuff. And with the double insert, you can put two. So I'm, I'm transporting my radios in this. This is my, this is my, uh, my DX9 that I'm putting in there. And, uh, and that's kind of what that looks like. And again, double radio case, real nice. I'm putting all my stuff in here. So if you got two radios, you can put less batteries. If you got one radio, you can put more batteries in. And that's uh, that's kind of how that is. So anyway, I just this was at my feet, so I just figured I'd pick it up and show it to you while I'm while I'm looking at it. So all right, if everybody's ready, we're gonna get to this thing. Let me stick my phone down here. Hopefully nobody's gonna call me. I'm gonna put a couple of these things up here, and here we go, folks. Here's the first plane on the chopping block. If everybody's ready to go, let me get my uh, my chat log up so I can kind of listen to people or see people as I'm sort of doing this here. So. Uh, all right, is everybody right? Yeah, the P40 is pretty darn sweet. Um, Shadow Op says he just unboxed nitro fuel. Uh, just unboxed nitro fuel and batteries. Okay, yeah. 
Uh, uh, Josh, uh, Josh Flyboy 007 says, hey, Rich, I have the Draco coming. Thanks for the heads up on the manual. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad. Well, that, again, the Horizon guys, Jason over there asked me to just kind of let everybody know that, and, and that's it's nothing like having a manual of issues, you know. So, But actually, the airplane probably goes together pretty quick, pretty easy without even the manual, So, but maybe there's some stuff in there you really need. Uh, Northeast FPV is in the house. Thanks for coming, guys. Uh, all right, Pilot Jerry RC. All right, we got about 60 guys here. Let's go with it here. Here we go. Let me, uh, let me, uh, let me take this. Uh, actually, I got to move my chat window real quick, guys. I'm almost ready to set up my functional dual camera, actually quad camera setup in the workshop. So I'm going to have multiple cameras everywhere soon. Finally, because of COVID-19, folks, um, all of this um, um, streaming stuff, software, hardware, all that kind of stuff has become hot commodities. So it took me about six months to get a decent camera switcher here. So, all right, guys, available at Banana Hobby. This is what's coming, okay? Banana Hobby's making, again, a huge comeback, okay? Um, 1,100 millimeter warbirds and 105 millimeter jets and some other stuff and turbine. I mean, they got, a, they, they're, they're getting, they got back in with turbine, but... Um, this is the T28. This is the Jolly Roger paint job, and I'm going to be showing you the, the training squadron version here shortly. But this is how it looks just coming out of the box. Um, if you guys want one of these, um, all you have to do is uh, just go to, um, you know, the Banana Hobby website, um, and you can, you can go to their, their uh, let, me, let me see if I can flip to this thing real quick. All you have to do is go to their Warbirds. And in fact, you know what you can do? My link is in the description below. You can click on that and go there. And then once you get there, um, what you have is um, you basically can just go to Warbirds Military and then just scroll down a bit, see if I can get to that. And you can see uh, the pictures of it right there. So um, that's just how you get to it. So if you guys, again, if you guys check out my link, all my links in the description below, guys, they support the channel, and I'm giving you links to all this stuff so you guys can get to it. And that really does help us out. So let me, uh, let me get rid of that. And let's get this thing out of the box. So we got right over here, we've got some padding. We've got our horizontal stabilizers. I had pulled some of these out earlier because I needed to look at a few things. And, uh, but we'll show you how these come. These are your horizontals. Um, but just pretty nice overall, guys. Um, you know, it comes like any other plane. You know, the, these are just ready to be plugged in. There's actually not a tail spar, but there's a tail, tail like centerpiece, really, that uh, all these plug into. And I'll show you that. It's pretty, pretty actually neat. And check this out. This is the wing. It's got a speed brake on it. Let's get all this out of the box. Here, let me pull these. Let me just get everything out. The wing comes like that. Let me get uh, this padding out of here. I'll throw that over there. And our fuselage. Let's get this out of here. Put this down here. And then don't forget your prop down in the box bottom. It's just down in there. Just kind of peel that away. There you go. We'll get that out of there. And then, uh, and then there's parts like right here. So don't, don't throw your box out too soon. Make sure you build your plane. <laughs> Always build your plane first before you throw the box out. So you're not throwing stuff out. I've never done that before, right? So and here's all the parts to get it together. Pretty simple. Pretty simple setup. Um, we are not going to do a complete assembly, but we're going to throw the whole thing together. So we'll, we'll take a look at all this stuff. Um, prop comes out of here. Nice three-bladed prop. Uh, again, guys, this is 1,100 millimeter, three to six cell powered plane. Um, oh, sorry, three to four cell powered plane, not six. Don't put a six cell in this. You'll, uh, you'll make it glow. Uh, parts bag right here. Let's get the wing out and take a look at the wing. Just pull this thing out of here and uh, just slide this out. Real nice wing overall. Check that out. Jolly Rogers, folks. Hey, and this is a real airplane, too. Um, in fact, you know what? Let me, uh, let me go to, um, let me type in T28. I should have got a picture. Here, let's see if I can find this. Yeah, um, let me go to images. Yeah, here it is, guys. Um, this is this is a real plane. I mean, I, I don't know if it was used in the military, but probably, you know, after military use, you know, probably here. Let me throw it up here. Yeah, here's here's uh, here's some pictures, folks, of the uh, you know the the full scale version of this plane. Um, so this is made after a real full scale. It's not. This is not just a sort of a fantasy plane. 
And um, you can see right here, I actually didn't plan on doing this, but this, this will probably work out uh, pretty decently here. Let me, let me see if I can get a picture of it right here. Uh, I think this is it right here. Yeah, uh, 746. Here, let's pull this up right here. Let me go, uh, hang on, there it is. All right, and there we got it, there you have it. Um, let me see if I can get this box moved over a little bit more. Um, let's see, too much automation here. Uh, hang on a second, there I got it. Let me move this over just a bit, there it is. So you can see, you know, it's the same number and everything. So this is a real plane, they, they modeled this after. Uh, Carrie told me she asked them to make this because she thought it was such a cool paint job, and it is. I mean, it's pretty pretty sharp looking. And uh, here we'll get into reviewing some of this. Let me uh, let me get rid of the window, um, and uh, let me see if anybody's got uh, here questions real fast. Let me zoom to the live stream chat log there. What do you guys think? Pretty cool so far. Pretty neat. Yeah, I mean, like I said, Banana Hobby's coming out with all these really nice 1100 millimeter Warbirds. Um, and uh, I'll, give you guys, uh, I'll give you guys some detail on this. We'll take a look at the wing first. Um, let me zoom in on that so you guys can see, see how nice this thing looks. See the detail on that thing, how nice it is? All the panel lines, rivets. There's, uh, there's wingtip lights as well. Um, real nice flaps um, as well. Let me get the, I got the wrong flap there. There you go. Um, uh, so it is a little old school because, you know, you do have to put in your, your, your horns, you know, you have to screw those in. There's two screws each. If you have spare screws, you could do four, but it really only needs the two. So, um, and it's a laminated hinge. In fact, you can look down in there and you can see the laminate in there. It's pretty tough. So if you ever have one of these hinges come off, which that it does happen with foam hinges, you know, sometimes you just, that's where, that's where your, uh, you know, your foam tack comes in handy. You just run a bead across there to fix it. But, um, but this is cool. It even has a really nice, speed brake. You can see the, you know, let me put it here. Sorry about that, guys. The speed brake servo is right here. Here's your speed brake underneath. It functions off the separate channel. I mean, you probably could die. You probably could set this up, you know, into the, uh, into the, into the brakes if you want to. Sorry, that's, that's not the way to do that. But you can see it's got a real nice speed brake that comes out, you know, pretty sharp servo driven and, uh, and pretty cool. Gear doors are real nice and they articulate. There's actually a, uh, there's actually a spring loaded door right here. And I'll get them down for you here. I actually have the other airplane already assembled, so we'll, we'll talk through, we'll talk through that. But there's spring-loaded doors. The inner doors are spring-loaded as well. Uh, the, again, the only caveat to this is, is you got to put the horns, rods, horns, and, and linkages on. But they did a pretty good job applying the tape, you know, if it, uh, if it sticks up at all anywhere, just kind of put it back down. Um, that happens from shipping sometimes, not a big deal. And if you have to, just put some, uh, you know, um, put some foam tack on that and just push it back down. But the color match of the tape is very nice. They did a very good job with getting that on there. It looks like we've got, uh, um, uh, you can see all the spars uh, running through there, the spar pockets. Um, yeah, really, really nice. You can see everything's all wired nicely. Everything's labeled. There's all Y harnesses to hook up everything if you have to hook up, you know, for the for your ailerons and your flaps and all that stuff. But it's all pre-wired, ready to go. In fact, um, all you have to do really here is just peel this off of here. In fact, I'll just get this off of here now. And you can see all your wires in here kind of ready to go. There's your separate one, okay, down there for your, uh, for your speed brake. And I plug that into a separate channel and put it on a separate switch is how I'm going to do mine. But you can see everything's labeled nice. You know, you got your uh, flaps here. I'll zoom way in on this for everybody. Um, yeah, you got your flaps Y harnessed together here. Got your, uh, got your lights. This thing has four lights on it too. So really neat. Um, and there's the ailerons, and let's see, landing gear right here. So everything's wired nicely, as you can see. Everything's uh, pretty much ready to go. And um, yeah, real nice, real nice wiring package. So uh, if you guys got any questions, let me know. You know, throw them up here. I'm trying to kind of read this chat log at the same time. Yeah, the gray and black is cool, man. There's nothing cooler than the Jolly Rogers paint job. And, and it's just, it's, it's, it's pretty darn awesome all the way around. Um, and I'm glad they made a T28. I really want a Tomcat with a Jolly Roger paint job. That's, that's one plane I'm really dying to get. I love my F-14, but, but I need Jolly Rogers on there. I need VF-84 is what it is. I think it's become VF-103 um, over the years or whatever. But, uh, but super nice, folks. Here's your, here's your wingtip. Uh, here, let me zoom in on that so everybody can see that. 
one of your wingtip lights right there. Very nice lens cover. Again, guys, this is coming from Banana Hobby. You know, they're making some nice stuff here. So very cool lens cover on there and uh, panel lines and details and all that kind of stuff. So, all right, let's take the wing aside. I think we've got that, uh, got that all set up or kind of knocked out. We'll put this, uh, let me just put this here for just a second. Just lean this up back against here. And then uh, horizontal stabilizers, that's pretty self-explanatory. There's actually not really any rivets on this or panel lines. These just plug right in. It's pretty, pretty simple, straightforward. Um, the prop is very, very nice. And in fact, I'm going to pull these parts out so everybody can kind of see this stuff. And in fact, I'll raise my table up a little bit. Let me see, make sure I'm not going to snag anything. My hydraulic uh, electric lift here. So, and then I can zoom in a little better kind of for everybody here. Um, the prop is real nice. See the detail on that? It's painted nicely. So you may want to check the balance of it, as with all props. There's a very nice prop nut right here. And in fact, I'll zoom in on that. Again, metal hub in there. You got, uh, you got uh, metal threads in there to put this thing on. So the detail on the prop is, uh, is very nice. You know, they did a good job painting it. And uh, yeah, it's nice. So just check the balance. And I'll, I'll let you know if mine's balanced or not balanced or whatever. But we'll talk about that as, as we go on. It's got a very nice hex drive as well. So just in case anybody's wondering about this, the hex drive is right there. So it is a positive lock on the front of the airplane, which I'll put right here. It's got that hex drive. So this baby goes right on there. Okay, that's simple. And you screw your prop on and that's it. So you want to have this off <laughs> the first couple times, the first time you power it up, okay? Or don't have the prop on there. Leave the prop off, okay? And, uh, and then uh, you know, put it on later on, that kind of thing. So anyway, uh, Save the Humans left me a message here and it's, uh, it's hidden, so let me show it here. And uh, let's see, what does he say? Uh, please hit the like, share, and subscribe. Yeah, I appreciate that. For you guys commenting on that, thanks for doing that. I sometimes forget about that. But yeah, I mean, I know I reiterate it sometimes. But um, yeah, if you guys like, subscribe, share the videos. That really supports us, man. That really helps us out. And in fact, it's the like button that you guys can hit um, that, that really shares our video to more places. It helps us grow. But look at the detail on there. Look at that. Naval Aviation Centennial. Look at that. So um, lots of cool decals, uh, details on here. Um, I'll kind of run down the side. You can see those exhaust pipes right there um, by the sticker here. I think that's a sticker. Yeah, that's a sticker that's applied there. And um, fit and finish looks pretty nice. You know, I've actually, here's the thing. Also, keep in mind, I've had mine out in the sun for photographs, okay? So if you see a little blistering here, mostly on mine, I had this out in the hot sun and I actually pulled this off, okay, when I was outside. And I could feel the heat coming out of this ventilated hole because I had it in direct sunlight taking pictures. So, so the gatoring you're seeing here, that happened on my watch when I had this out doing photos because I took it out, did some photos, and then stuck it back in the box. Okay, but the finish on this thing really is awesome. It's, it's pretty nice. Um, uh, and then as we go down the tail here, you can see all those. These are, your, these are basically your, your basically spar posts is what I'm going to call them. There's really not a carbon spar. It kind of runs all the way through the, uh, the end of this thing. So, but you can got like a little speed brake uh, panel here that's uh, cut into there with panel lines. Um, you've got cooling holes underneath. And, and of course, there's a light. There's a real nice light on there. And um, cooling holes down below. Let's see, the rudder's probably the neatest part because it's got the nice, uh, the nice art on there. Here, let me flip it this way. Um, you can see how nice the, uh, the artwork is, is there on the tail. In fact, let me flip it the other way because I got the camera really kind of going this way here. So yeah, see how nice that is. Linkage is ready to go down here for your rudder. All you got to do is put the horn on back here. So all the screws fit through fine, guys. In fact, the, pro the only problem I really did find really was the screws that went through your horns um, were actually um, a little bit too long. But, so I ended up cutting some of them off with a pair of, uh, you know, wedge cutters or dike pliers or whatever, or a Dremel tool. So, so in the old days, sometimes some of these companies would give you screws that are too short and you couldn't get them through. And it was like, oh, geez, nobody, a lot of people don't have little screws like that. But this, uh, some of them are too long. So if you have to cut them, that's fine. But just get them through there and then snap off what you don't need. And I'll show you that here. Also up here, folks, another light here. So there's four LED lights on this plane. I think the only thing it's missing that I'd like to have would be a landing light. But it's got a top light. Um, it's got the belly light under here. And then it's got the wingtip lights. So it's fairly well lit for, you know, uh, a little airplane. 
It looks like everything's glued in here. You can see this panel right here. This is the rudder vertical that's glued in place. So, but nice decal application pretty much. They did a good job on everything. Fit and finish is nice. Um, it looks like we've got um, screws underneath and, or screw holes, I should say. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think those are, I think those are all machine screw holes. So I, I'm pretty sure those are threaded. We'll, we'll know when we put them on. I, I don't remember. It may or may not be. But here's your pass-through hole, okay, for your, your wires to go through. And then I think, you, if you want to, I, th I think you can pass through your wire here um, for your speed brake, your belly speed brake underneath. So, so, but pretty neat overall. Landing gear is in place right here. Uh, you know, gear and doors for your nose gear. So a little tail skid back here, you know, in case you bump. So, but, but pretty nice overall. You know, there's a front shot of it right there. Let's get it up front. So, yeah, check it out, guys. Banana Hobby is, uh, you know, they're coming out with some nice models here. So, um, I've been hearing customer service is real good now. So, you know, and in fact, in fact, if you guys got any comments on that, you know, you know, please comment because, you know, um, um, you know, Banana Hobby's under new management. They've got, uh, you know, a new crew there and they're, they're really focusing on their customer service and after service uh, support and all that stuff. So, or after sales support. So, yeah, check it out, guys. Real nice model, though. Uh, I'm dying to get this out there. It should be a little pocket rocket, um, you know, on a 4S. So 3S, it's probably fine, but 4S, it's probably um, a, a rocket plane. So this comes off. I did lose a magnet, I noticed here. The, the tape on the back here stuck on here, so I'm probably just going to replace. That's a very mild offense. I'll probably just stick a piece of tape right there, another piece of tape, and just tape that down. That's, that's a one-off, folks. That happens sometimes. So sometimes the tape doesn't adhere from shipping, so just... Just put another piece of tape over your magnet, and that'll hold it down. So, um, but uh, a little bit of an instrument panel here. Let me see if I can get this uh, in the center here. A little bit of an instrument panel in the canopy, and a gigantic cooling hole there in the center. So, um, um, I do wish they put some pilots in this, or at least one pilot. But you know, it, it's thin enough here, the material right here, where you can put put a, put one in there. You could even peel the, if you wanted to, you could even peel the Lexan. Okay, off of here and just put a pilot and re-glue it if you wanted to. But but you can go just put a hole right through there and get your pilot in through the underside. So um, let's take a look at the inside here real quick. This is how this thing looks. In fact, let me flip it. Let me flip it this way and get a good look in there. Um, you can see that towards the uh, towards the back, uh, right down there, that is um, your. Um, I think that's the rudder. Yeah, that's your rudder servo. It's already rigged and ready to go. It seems to me that that outer hole actually is going to be the place for it to go. Also, notice this. Right along this edge here, folks, there's a carbon spar running along here for rigidity. So it's either carbon or fiberglass, one or the other. But in either case, we've got some rigid structure in there to connect the front to the back. So, so they're making them strong. That's a good thing. It's nice that they're putting some structure in there instead of uh, having no structure. And you can see here that, um, let me back away a little bit here on the zoom. Check out... Check out the detail. I really like the detail of this, the, the rescue. This is another nice decal they put on there. Very cool detail on there. Push emergency, uh, you know, canopy, uh, release and all that stuff, rescue. That's kind of cool. Um, and then uh, on the inside here, folks, you can see what this looks like. Uh, pretty straightforward. You've got your uh, speed controller up front uh, right here. In fact, it's a, um, let's take a pull it out so we can see. A, it's, a, it's an Aerostar. Get in on that. Everybody can see that. Aerostar, 45 amp. Um, I think it, eh, that's what it's labeled. It might actually even be a 50, but I'm not sure. So um, usually these are rated a little lower, you know, than what, uh, you know, than what they're, they're, they're actually rated for. The, the number's lower than what they're actually rated for, I should say, on there. So anyway, um, and you've got your BEC line coming off of it, you know. So, you know, you got your power line. And um, these, uh, these XT60s, work perfectly fine um, with your, uh, your uh, um, EC and IC five pl uh, three plugs. So, so they'll work with the blue ones, they'll work with the, all the Horizon Hobby um, uh, yellow stuff, uh, orange orange ones. So the bullet size is the same, so they're adaptable, you can use them, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty good. So, um, and then, um, yeah, all your wires are in there, you can see everything's wired. In fact, let me try to get some semblance of order here, because they are kind of all flapping around, but that's okay. Um, 
I actually took, what I'm gonna do is put Velcro later on the inside. We'll talk about that during the flight demo. I'll Velcro this down so the speed controller's not moving around, that's all. So use double-sided tape or Velcro or something. But all your wires all come together kind of right here. Here's three of them. Uh, this is gear, rudder, and throttle right up front. And then coming up the back, there's one light, okay? There's an elevator, and then there's the, 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 um, the rudder channel. So, so the rudders are meant to sort of actually be put together in a Y harness, which is included. All that stuff's in here. And, um, and then you, um, you can have them Y harnessed together. You can put them on a separate channel, which is actually what I did with the other one, and I'll show you that here here pretty shortly, but it's all in good order. Uh, the only thing you're going to have to do on here, though, is um, there's clearly no place for the battery to secure to. There's not a strap or anything. So probably, you know, in this case, if you want to make yourself a, a battery floor, I guess you can, but just put Velcro. You know, uh, everybody's using Velcro on their batteries. I usually don't, as you guys know, so, but I have batteries that have Velcro on them, so I'm going to stick some Velcro down in here and just Velcro a battery down. So, and I'll show you all this stuff during the flight demo when I actually get these together and get them out there and get them officially going. So, um, but, uh, but overall, not, uh, not bad. And then here's our hardware. Let's look at the hardware. This is actually, they got some real nice kind of hardware with all this stuff. I'll show you what this all looks like. Let me snap that on there. And um, let's take a look at what we got. We got all this hardware here. Let me, let me raise this up without dinging my Rafal there. All right, here we go, guys. I'm going to zoom in, and we'll show you all this stuff. There's tons and tons and tons of hardware. Not too much, really, but um, here's your four main wing bolts. Okay, these look like they are three or four. <clears throat> Actually, I think they're four millimeter metric, if I'm not mistaken. Those are your four wing bolts that just go through the bottom. Put your wing on, and then you've got uh, Y harnesses. You can see right here, very nice little Y harnesses you can see right here. So they're compact, they're not huge, okay? Um, in fact, I'll pull one out so you guys can really see up close how that looks. It's a nice little compact one. I really kind of impressed. Um, also, guys, for all your planes, like I've talked about before, um, always tighten your connections here. I had one landing gear the other day that wasn't working, one or two, when I put the other one together. Not a big deal, but it was just the connectors. These connectors, it doesn't matter who makes it, FMS, Horizon, Motion RC, it makes no difference. These connectors can always be kind of loose. So I have a video on the channel. It's called Save Your Plane. <laughs> so if you guys haven't seen that video, please check that one out. Um, and in fact, what I will do is I will go to it uh, actually right now. I'm going to show it to you guys so you all can see the, what that looks like. Let me go to, uh, yeah, let's go to RC, let's go. Sorry about the delay, guys. I should have done this before, but I wasn't. Sometimes I don't think I'm going to do all these little things here. But um, here, let me go to. Uh, oh, there's my video. 70 watching right now. Awesome. All right, let's see. Uh, let's go to my channel and let's go back a little bit. I think you guys can probably see this. Uh, let's go back a little bit, back a little bit. Now, let's go to all videos. Let's go to videos. And this is the video you want to watch right here. Um, where, is it? where is it? Where is it? There it is. Quick tip. As well as you'd like them to be. In other words, out. you, you can see the two out. contacts in there that are kind of like this, where I show and you guys they're a little bit off. Okay, so you're pushing down on this one. You can sometimes you really stack that underneath <laughs> I'll make the a joke main contact, and that's a problem. You have to kind of really pull don't back need up and to over. Check all so if they're not lined up straight like this, and they're actually it's like this, so, you may have to put um, your knife on yeah, one side and push because it a lot of forward so they line up nice and straight. Yeah, so you've actually got one that's pushing one down that's on the other. Ripping. So you know, that's what we have really in some of these situations. So if that happens, sometimes you need to actually put your knife on the side of this thing or a tool of other kind and just kind of twist it a little or push it to bend um, those loose. two over, okay? So you'll have, Titan. instead of them check being out the on the video. side of the each other right there, they'll actually again, come together. Uh, and and your contacts so, from this you know, angle, you'll be pushing down that That's a good video. on that it's thing, like and then you'll be making both of those long. things kind of tight. So, um, 
All you do when you're done with this part of it is you just really just push this so this right back in, uh, and generally what it'll do is it'll snap into place, stuff, so. and they're all um, back anyway, in there. So, so there's just make all sure that, that you do that on all of these things, or if you have a loose connector, is, you know, it's a great way to tighten it. I can see right here, for example, this middle one. This in. one's off quite it's a bit, again, I can definitely tell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that right out of there again. Let me grab the, this time I'm going to grab the middle wire, and I'm going to put some pressure on that as I'm pulling it out again. I'll lift this plastic piece up just a little bit. Bit. You know, your elevator get that thing up. out of there. Did you guys get any of these in the mail? Like halfway from through. That are too short Again, I'll put my knife right under that plastic piece. Them. Very carefully you know pull that right out. But all mine, I put the other one playing together, like I said. And you can see right there that um, those are a little bit off, and you can definitely see how they're not really lined up. They're they're off a little bit. And again, when you push this tab down, you can snap it under that. And that kind of defeats the purpose of it because you're getting Short, under uh, that contact where you want to be on top of it. You want it to be bit. nice and straight. Let me see and you if, want to be pushing uh, it down. So got, uh, what know, we'll do with this top one, top as y'all can here. hopefully see and, uh, here, uh, see is I'm going to go ahead and, again, put my knife on the side of this here. thing carefully because they're not all made the same and push it over. If I have to get under this other one here, I'll read a couple of the opposite side and just um, push that upward a little Rich, bit, the, and that kind of gets the same goal was, accomplished. Sometimes you got to push one one uh, way, David sometimes you got to push Clement, one the sorry. other way, but Rich, now you, you can see there, they're now all lined up there pretty Scotland nicely, flying, and now if uh, I need to tighten it up further, yep. I can just put uh, my, holiday, my knife man. on there and just push really down on that well. baby, and now that thing is uh, is nice and tight. So now when I push that that male end in there, it's going to have those contacts, and it's actually going to... It's actually going to push in there uh, pretty uh, tight. See, uh, it's going to have a nice contact uh, on there, saying, and we're not going to have a loose connection. Now, I know this Please works really like well, because uh, we uh, I've like. had many times where yeah, a servo that, wouldn't that, work, and I did this, and it fixed it. When uh, me and Jerry were at Top Gun, we were flying our, uh, I was flying my F-14, and he had his MiG-29. He had his gear see, fail uh, um, on the ground right said, before the contest, oh, I and got audio he couldn't going figure on. it out. We couldn't figure it out, so I went through all of his connectors, and I said, let's tighten this, let's tighten this, let's tighten this. And after we tightened a few of these connectors, boom, immediately his gear started working again. So his gear stopped working. All right, did that fix it? I think that probably fixed it. All right, I got audio. Sorry, I wasn't watching the message board there. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry if I blocked over anything. Here, let's see. All right, guys, let me know. Send me some text. Tell me if uh, you guys got good audio now. Both video and stream is going. Okay, video's still on. Was it too loud? Let me know. Is it too loud? Because I didn't mean to do that if I did that. Let's see. Uh, yeah, sorry about that, guys. Uh, hey, let me go back to that. That's the thing about working multiple screens sometimes. I am going to turn the audio back on for just a second. I'm going to lower it, and then I'm going to shut it down again here. So it should be gone. Give me a thumbs up, guys. Give me some comments. Let me know if you guys got good audio back again. I guess I had the video going too darn loud. My bad. My bad. I'm probably talking over myself. You guys didn't get anything. Sound off. Video stop. I got it. I got it. All right, there we go. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. There's just too much information here. There's too much. Uh, I got display panels everywhere. and So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's too much. Believe me, flying a 757 is way easier than doing this. So, anyway. All right, good. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, yeah, other video sounds came in. Sorry about that. Yeah, uh, that's what I get for not watching the chat log long enough. So um, I hope I didn't go over that too bad or blast through all that. All right, is there anything that the audio drowned it out, okay, that you guys want to see again that I didn't say that you maybe missed, okay? If you guys are good, we'll, we'll go on. But if you guys want to see something else, um, you know, let me know if I, if, I, if I stomped or can't hear what you're saying if you're talking over the video. Yeah, sorry about that, guys, again. Um, all right, well, we'll get to assembling this. I'm assuming that the audio is still good. You guys sent me good. All right, good. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to get this thing together. I'll show you how easy this is. Thing, this thing is to, to kind of snap together here. And I am going to get a, I think I got a, let me get a plane stand here. Let me get one of these up there. I'm going to try, let me see which one works better. I got this nice cruise in plane stand. I don't know if John Zinn is still selling these, but you know, if he is, check it out at uh, cruisein.com. He's got a really nice plane stand here. These are all aluminum. And then, of course, the, the Ernst stands are kind of out of this world. They're just plastic, so they're very nice, though. Um, let me see if I can get this. Let me see if I can actually get this on this stand on there. Yeah, I guess that, that'll work. Yeah, in fact, I'll go the other way with it because it, it actually makes more sense that way. That's going to pop off of there, isn't it? Yeah, that magnet, i got to change that tape on there. We'll do that. So let's see. Let's lower this on down. All right, and we'll get to the detail on this thing. So, 
All right, no, keep going. EQ says, you keep going. Um, someone said uh, rebranded Durafly. Man, these are nice though. You got to admit, they're very nice. So, and you can get them in the USA, you know, now really directly, which is the coolest thing. So, all right, here we go. Let me uh, lower my lift here a little bit. And I'm going to show you this. There's no tail spar on this airplane, folks. That's one of the interesting things about it. It doesn't have a spar that you kind of run through traditionally. It has these two posts sticking out. But it does have a receiver tube right here, if you can see that. You can see it has two receiver tubes that plug right in there. And that's plenty strong. I, I kind of was a little shocked when I first saw it. Um, but that's, that's, that works out actually pretty, pretty darn good. Um, and it's actually fairly tough. So it's really not, not a problem. So what we're going to do is take the elevator, simply put. And here's one thing I found when I was putting the other one together. I found that this tube was maybe sticking out just a bit. So what I did is I took a screwdriver and I stuck it in there. Okay and then just very carefully push this way, okay? And what that's gonna do is kind of push that spar tube inward a little bit. If you need to do this, you may not need to, but it'll, it'll kind of break free sometimes and it'll push in there. If, you're, if your elevator is not fully seating down in there, that's pretty much how you get that on there. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in place and it looks like, actually, you know what? It looks like mine's going in just fine. Uh, that's it, folks. That, that is your, your elevator you know, connection. It's that simple. And then there is a bag of screws for this. Let me, uh, let me back this out a little bit. Let me find the right. I'm trying to figure which bag this one was in. Oh, here it is. If you guys go to your elevator bag, pretty simple stuff, okay? You've got your elevator horn, okay, in here. And you've got your two fat screws down there that you can see. That's what you're going to secure this thing with. So if I just back out here, I'll just leave this as is, and I'm going to grab this little screw out of here. I'm going to dump the bag here. and. Um, using my screwdriver, I'm gonna put this on. And actually, I'm not even sighting this, I'm just doing this, I'm just kinda of eyeballing this through here. I got the servo sort of in the way, but I'm just gonna put that up there. Let's see if it taps in there, okay. Um, first time putting this one together, so yeah, it taps in there pretty nice, that's it. So, if you guys are concerned about the security of this, just keep in mind, there is a carbon tube running through this entire thing, so, you know, all you have to do to really test this thing out is grab this and move it up and down, and you're going to see it's tough. It's got plenty of spar running through there. That center section kind of reminds me of the uh, FMS ASW-17 uh, glider because it has an aluminum spar box. This has a plastic spar box. There's not a lot of, there's not a lot of load on this thing, so it's not, it's not really that critical of a thing. So um, I'll flip this around, and I'll take the second one. We'll pop this on. Let me see if I need to push this tube back in there a little bit. Um, yeah, it's going a tiny bit, but you know, I had a problem with the other one getting it on. This one actually doesn't seem to have that, that issue. Not a big deal, just a little fit thing. Um, as long as you can get this in there and it goes into place okay, you know, you should be good to go. Um, this one might need a little more. Let me pop this out. But again, these two posts right here, I'll zoom in again. These two posts are basically, again, what I'm going to call like just spar posts. They're, they're center center spar posts that the two of them plug into. And it's all just a one molded piece of plastic. So you've got a nice square one, you know, and you've got a round one that, that they plug into. And they're, they seem to be rigid enough, you know, especially when you combine that um, with, um, with the fact that there is an actual spar tube right in there. So, um, but let me see if I can push this thing in really fast. I'm gonna do this again. Let me back this off a little bit because I think that's what's restricting that from going in. Sometimes this little piece just sticks out a little too much. And if you just push in on that spar a little bit, um, and all I'm using is the base of the screwdriver, just to kind of punch that in, just push it in a little bit, get that to slide a hair, and then it should fit a little bit better. Because what you have to do is you got to uncover, you just have to make sure that these holes line up. Uh, and I'll, I'll back off into here, you can see that. You just have to make sure that those holes line up with each other right there, the screw holes. So um, what I'll do is I'll pop this in place. Let me back away a little bit. There we go. And then, of course, you got to make sure your elevators line up. These things, you got to make sure they plug into each other right down in here. And they will. They, they go together real nice. And uh, let's see how that goes in. Let's get those, get those aligned. Let's see. Popping that in place. There we go. Sometimes you got to fiddle with it a little bit just to get it in place. And we'll get that down in there. I may have to further work that in a little bit, but let's see if we can get that screw in place. See if it fits. Let me sight it from the top. Yeah, it looks like it should go in there okay. 
So, and that's, that's really it, folks. Let me get the, uh, yeah, what did I do with the other screw? Did I just lose that screw? No, there it is. So normally I'll take my screw, I'll put it right on the screwdriver, I'll flip it around like this, put it right into the hole, and we'll tighten it up, which it's falling off my screwdriver here. So let's get that down in there. Yeah, that'll tap in there nice. So good fit, nice fit all the way around. Um, and then really you just put two screws into your, um, into your horn. So you've got your typical horns right here. I'll put those right here. These are your old school style horns, which I'll kind of, let me raise those up a little bit. Get up there. Get this a little closer here. You can see how those are, uh, get this a little closer there. There we go. You can see how nice that, um, how, how those go on. And the way that this is going to fit, in fact, let me flip this around. Let me do it to, this to the other side. You've got holes right here. Let me get in here. Sorry about that, guys. Got the, the zoom wrong. You've got four holes right. Yeah, I'm just not getting this right, am I? <laughs> Hang on a sec. Let me lower here. All right, I'm getting the camera angle thing messed up. There's holes. Let me get the stand out of the way. That's what's, that's what's impeding me here. Um, right down here. This is where you're going to see those holes right here. Those four holes. You only have to use, you know, two of them. But that's where you're going to put uh, your screws through. And we're going to put our horn just basically just right in there. So let me put this down for a second. I'm going to line this up so I can get this uh, kind of set up for everybody without dropping the plane. Let me see which holes. It looks like these are meant to go through here. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put one of these on because we don't really need to do all of them. Um, and then you can kind of see what it's like. So this is the tail one that's going to go on here. All I'm going to do is line this up in such a way that's probably going to hang off the table just a bit. I think I got that in the center of the screen. There we go. Let me zoom in so you all can see how that's going to go down. I'll lower this just a little bit. There we go. That should work out okay. I think you guys can probably, probably just see that. So, um, let me get that. Actually, that's kind of off, isn't it? Let's go back this way some. I'm going to go, go a little farther that way without knocking the whole thing off. Yeah, there it is. All right, it's towards the top of the screen, but I think you guys will get the, uh, get the gist of this. So we're going to put this right here. Screw this in place. And I'll line up that screw. This is one place where you do not need the back plate. Okay? There, there is a back plate for all of these. That's what it looks like right there. It goes on the top side normally of the of the, the surface. But with this, it's actually going into a big plastic piece. So you can see it's got this nice plastic doubler. And uh, I'm just gonna get this on here. So let me uh let me zoom, let me get this in place. Yep, that doesn't want to go in there, does it? All right, let me do this by hand. Yeah, let me fiddle with this just a bit. It's uh there we go. That should get it in place. Put that nope, wrong screwdriver. I need the thin, skinny one. There it is. Getting that baby right in there. So I don't, I'm pretty sure these go into there pretty solid and don't need the, they don't need the back plate because you can feel it biting in there. Uh, let's hope that goes through. Yeah, it looks like it is. I got my finger on the other side. You can see what that looks like. All right. So we won't put every one of these in. We'll probably put one more in on the wing or something so you guys can see how, how they go through there. Um, well, that one's not going through at all, is it? Let's see. Let me get that to cut through. I may have to show you that one on the demo. Yeah, that one's not cutting through the middle, is it? Let me see. see oh, I got it. I, I just don't have it lined up right. Here we go. Hang on. Get that, uh, get that in the right hole. Yeah, I'm having a hard time. Nope, that's going in. I got it. Sometimes you just got to kind of move it around, sight it through, and line it up, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Yeah, these go in there real nice. Very nice, because you got a whole plastic fitting that this thing goes on. We'll look at the top side here in just a second, but let me, uh, let me get this going through there first, and then uh, you guys can see it. So you get that on there, and then all it is is just to put your, your, uh, your rod on. That's the next thing that's going to go in place, and these things have... A, 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 a preset hole that they go in. Some of them are already cut out. I am probably not going to use that outer hole. I'm probably going to use like probably the third one from the center. We will talk about that later when I fly the plane because that's where it kind of comes down to 
you know, uh, the nitty gritty of what's going to make it fly well. Probably the outer hole is going to be too much throw. So, but we'll talk about that in the flight because I don't, again, I don't want to tell you where to put it when it's probably not going to go there and it's going to go somewhere else. You got to, I got to kind of test that out a little bit and I'll, I'll give you all the gouge on that as usual, you know, when I fly this thing. So here, let's see. Um, so I'll snap that in place. And then the next thing I'm going to do, if I can find what I did with all my fuel tubing, which I might have just thrown someplace. I had a whole bunch of fuel tubing around that has disappeared. Oh, no, I know where it is. I put it in. Here it is. What I'll do is I'll take a little piece of fuel tube. Okay, let me grab a piece here. Yeah, there it is. Here we go. Or if you have an O-ring or something, just a little piece, and just with a hobby knife um, and something, I'm just going to cut. Uh, and in fact, I'll, I'll zoom in. Y'all can see that. It's pretty simple. You guys have probably seen this before, but some of you may have not, so I'll just kind of show you. Um, using a hobby knife right here and something that's you know relatively flat, I'm going to use my hobby knife like this. Y'all can see that. And I'm just going to cut right through there and make myself a, a little ring. Okay, that wasn't the best cutting job I've ever done, but, but that's okay because <clears throat> I'm doing it on camera. It's hard to see, but just make yourself a little ring. And then um, using a pair of pliers, uh, I'm going to put one of these around every single one of these because I don't want this thing to pop off. So, you know, this is how I do mine. Um, I will take a pair of pliers and I will put my o-ring or my uh, whether it's an o-ring or a piece of fuel tubing you spread it apart okay and then this is what's going to secure your connection so you do not lose your plane um yeah, let me lower this a little bit here hang on no that's as low as i can get it isn't it all right so let's get it down to here let me zoom out zoom out a little bit there we go special effects there it is wide angle there we go so i'm going to take this um before i actually put the the thing on here let me kind of go to here. Let me un unlatch that. I'm going to get this where I can see that thing. I'm going to go right to here. There we go. That's a better view. Raise the lift. We'll zoom in a little bit. And here's how we're going to do that. I'm going to take, hopefully I can do this without blocking y'all's view. <laughs> I'm just going to stretch this open. Squeeze that together. I'm going to stretch this open and put it over the tube. This is not normally how I do it. I'm just trying to do it so you guys can see uh, me doing it. Otherwise, if I do it the way I do it, I normally I, I'll block the view. So, but essentially, you squeeze this open. Let's see if I can do this. Squeeze that open and get this in there. Nope, nope, nope. Just ding my phone. That's something you don't want to do. But I'm doing this uh, kind of at the kind of difficulty. But take this just like that. Pop that in place. Yep, there's a good reason for touch-up paint right there. And then just slide your tubing on. There you go, like that. And then you slide it far enough down where you can kind of reopen your clevis and just put that thing back in place. So you can see here, I'll get this in there. Pop that on probably the outer hole. It's probably the one I'm going to use. And then just slide your tube back, back over it. So you really want to finish up all your surfaces this way. So you've got something, and let me flip it this way, you know, so you've got something to keep that clevis from opening. And that's pretty much your, your finished, you know, your finished product on, on the linkage and how it's going to go on there. Again, we'll talk about the whole position later when I get to flying it, because that's where it's going to kind of come down to the nitty gritty of stuff and where it really needs to be. Right now, I'm just, I would just be guessing, educated guess where it would go. And then, of course, you could see right here the top of this. This is a plastic fitting, so on this particular one, you don't really need that back plate. It's tapping into the plastic. At least I don't think you do. It seems tough. So if it comes off on me during flight, I'll let you know, but I don't think you need it on this one. If you want to put it over the top, you can, but it looks like it's tapping into the plastic, okay? It's getting tight as I'm, as I'm tightening it. So, so that is it for that, um, you know, that's it for that connection. And, uh, you know, the next part we got is just getting the, the wings on. Um, and here's what we're going to do. Um, the wing, I'm going to put one horn on here to just show you the regular way this goes together. You guys have probably seen this. Some of you guys have seen this a million times, but I'm going to go with the flap rods to start. And uh, let's see if I can find those. Those are hanging around here somewhere. Now they're on. Uh, flap, there they are. So what we'll do is I'm going to put this down on the table. 
and let's put, um, I'm going to raise this. Let's see how high I can raise this. We're going to go up here so everybody can sort of see this well. Hopefully I won't hit my refall. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So we'll zoom in. Everybody can hopefully kind of see this. And let me get to, um, let me get to this one right here. And this is how we're going to put all of these on. We're going to go with one right here. And you can see it comes with, uh, you know, two rods, uh, four screws, two horns, and, uh, and, and two back plates. So, you know, that's what you got in there. Real simple stuff to put these on. Um, and then all you have to do is just take, uh, take one of these, kind of put it over top, decide which holes you're going to go into. And here was the note I was making before, was that some of these screws are almost a little bit too long. So if you guys have shorter ones, somebody's calling me. If you guys want to use uh, shorter ones, um, you can, or you can even just snip these off after they're on. And I'll, sh I'll show you that here. It uh, only takes a couple seconds to, to, to sort of do this. But you just put your screws in here. See how they'll slide right in there? Uh, they should go in well. If they don't, just, you know, you may have to screw them in if they're kind of tight, but, you know, you shouldn't have to. And then there's what you got. And then your back plate is just going to, you know, connect onto the, the back side after you get the two of these, uh, the two of these things uh, together, if that makes sense. So just put this baby on here. Slide it carefully. And you might have to flip it up, okay, and look through the other side to make sure that you're not, make sure you're punching it through the right place. <laughs> because when you push this through, um, you could possibly get it going through the wrong side. So, but if you get it right, which I'll show you here, zoom in on this a little bit. You can see, you can see right here that they're sticking through and they're kind of long, okay? And that's okay though. I mean, again, too long is good, too short is, you can't make it work. So, so it's, it's, it's actually kind of good the way it is. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a back plate. Now, you, there's, there's, there's different ways that you guys can actually do this. If you want to put it this side with the, the, uh, with the extension kind of sitting out, the, the, you can. But if you want to flip it um, so it's the other way, which is my preferred way to do it, so the flat side is sitting up, then you can kind of paint over it. Here, let me see a show it like this. I know my fingers are in the way. You can go flat side up. Or you can go with uh, with with the the bullet ends or the kind of the nipple ends up. I guess you could say it's probably a good way to say it. Um, but uh, but that's really it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back off on this. So Y'all can see this. I'm going to take my screwdriver from the other side and just put these on. You know, that simple. So we'll get that get that in place. Start one, and then go with the other. Let me make sure the other side's lined up, and it is not. Um, and here we go. Let me get this in place. Right, that's going in. Yeah, beautiful. So you just kind of start it off like that, and you can see here they're tapping in nice. You know, it's not perfect, but they're tapping in there. And like I said, the reason I like doing it this way is because you end up with a flush, kind of more or less a flush mount there. And um, let me back this off a little bit, and I'll continue here to tighten this in place. So this will go down in. And here's the thing, you don't want to over tighten these. If you tighten them too much, um, if you tighten them too much, you start really indenting the foam. So I'm going to go very carefully here. In fact, I'm going to put my glasses on, my reading glasses, so I can see that a little better. Because you don't want to squeeze the foam too much. You just want everything to go flush so it's, uh, so it's down in there nicely. Again, if you have extra screws and you want to use four screws, you can, and that's probably about where it needs to be. So here's what I was talking about. The screws go through fine, okay, but they're sticking out a little too far, okay, and that's okay. It's not the end of the universe, but I would just, what I would do is just snip the end of those off. Maybe somebody put the wrong size screw in there, but that's okay. It's when they're short, the, the screws are too short, that um, you, you, you can't even reach the other side. The screw's just not, you know, long enough to get all the way through there, but when they're too long, you can still get everything through okay. And in fact, let me uh, let me take this, tighten that one just a little bit. You only want to tighten it again just a little bit to the point where you start feeling the foam compress just a little bit, and then you just you stop. Again, you only need two screws to hold this on. If you have spares and you want to use four, 
you know, use four. Just don't, just don't, oh, whatever you do, just don't over, over tighten them. So what I normally do with this kind of thing, when these are too long like this, again, is I will just take a pair of diagonal cutters and I'll just either cut those off. You can even back your screw out, cut them and shorten them, you know, to the length you want and then put them back in. I actually use often a Dremel tool and I will cut these off. You don't want to use the Dremel tool while this thing is plugged in like this because what it'll do, it will melt the plastic because the, the metal gets hot. So just back your screws out, shorten these and then put them back in, you know, cut them, shorten them and then put them back in. But I use a Dremel cutting wheel to cut those off. But that's the only caveat on this plane is I just noticed the screws are a little bit too long. But again, just cut them off to length, you know, cut them off to the length that you actually need. And, um, and that it's, it's not a big problem. I know in the past with models like this, there were times when half the screws were too short and nobody had little screws sitting around like this, little tiny things. So, so this is really kind of a non-issue non for me. I just, like I said, I just cut them off, make them flush. And the beauty is, is, you know, you can paint over those if you want. You can get some matching gray paint, paint over that and you'll be done. So, and that's it. You put all your other rods on and, and you're pretty much good to go with the whole, with the whole airplane. So um, what we'll do is we'll get the, the main part of it together here. And, um, and um, I'm gonna actually show you the completed other airplane, because I actually completed one, just so I could show you, show you what the other one looks like. So let's get this in here. I'm gonna feed this line, the wire back through here. I'm gonna run these through here. Let's see, we'll get those down in there. I'm gonna sight this through. Here, let's do this. Let's get that through. All right, let's see, we'll get that down in place. I'm gonna lock that, get that down in there. Now that wire got pinched. So I'm looking through here because I can see my, my speed brake wire down there. It's kind of getting stuck or kind of getting caught, but that's not a problem. But you can see that's a nice fit. Perfect fit and finish, really, really nice. I'll zoom in on that so y'all can kind of get in on that and see what that looks like. Super, super nice. So then we're gonna take our, our last screws, which I believe these are four millimeters. So let me, uh, let me undo this here, see what we got. Oh, there's my fuel tubing getting stuck in my drawer. Let me get that out of there. I hate it when that happens. So we'll take these screws. There's, uh, here's the other thing too. There's two long ones and two short ones. I think if I'm not mistaken, which we're going to find out here shortly, I think the long ones go up front, I believe. And I think the short ones go in the back. I'm pretty sure. So let's see how those line up. At first, <clears throat> they weren't fitting, but but then after I started screwing them in, I was like, oh no, they are tapping down in there, the rear ones especially. So here, let me see if I can lower just a little more. There we go. Let's get this one in place. But yeah, they've done a nice job on this. This is a pretty nice model overall. So I'll uh, get that tight. Let's see if we can get these rear ones in. Yep, they're tapping perfectly, going right in. Machine screws, guys, so it's metal threads to metal threads, okay? So they did a real nice job on these. Yeah, I can feel that biting nicely, so very good. You can feel your seams compressing as you're tightening this on there. There we go, very good, very good, very good, very good. Yeah, I like the way that fits. Yeah, it's going nice. When you see this starting to compress, stop, because you don't really need to compress the foam. You just gotta get it to the point where it's just starting to crease on me there. I'm speed building it too, so, so anyway, so that's it. Um, let's go wide on this. We'll flip this baby around. We'll see how it looks. Very, very nice. And uh, really, I mean, geez, that's, that's about it, except for getting all the electrical connections together so, um, and getting all your other rods and horns on, but that's, that's about it. It's pretty simple. So um, again, we talked about getting this on, and I will get this on, but I don't want to... Actually, you know what I will do? Because we're not going to really fully power this up. I'll just get the prop on there so you guys can see how nice that is. Very cool little model, folks. I think this is going to scoot on 4S. I think this is going to be a cool cool little flying airplane on 4S. I don't think it's gonna need a stabilizer, but you can always put, you know, an AS3X or a Reflex or something in there. Um, you have your, um, um, you have your Y harnesses. So what we'll probably do here real quick, let me, uh, let me take the top off of this thing. There we go. And let me flip this this way. And I'm not gonna do them all, but I think what we'll do, let me see if I can get the gear down, because I haven't really gotten it down on this one yet. So let's pull, Pull this down here. I'm just going to connect them for now. I'm going to go back and do my little tightening thing to this thing, you know, to make sure that they are tighter, okay? But for right now, I'm just going to try to, let's see if we can get the gear going on this thing. 
Um, like I said, I got the other one going completely, but I just thought I would see if we can get the wheels down on this, maybe even light up the lights or something and see, see if we can get that all going. So there's the, the front gear. Um, and where's the, oh, here it is. There's another Y harness coming for the rear gear. So you've actually got a, a two and one into another splitter and that kind of, basically it's a triple Y, but there's two Ys associated with it. So, but yeah, make sure you tighten all these. Um, yeah, not a, not a big deal. So that's it for that. And let me see if I have my handy dandy servo tester, which I think I just put down here. Hold on a second. I put it down here in another, yeah, there we go. Let me grab this and we'll see what we can do with this. So I've got my, my ultra fancy servo tester here. So we'll, we'll take this. I'm going to plug this in. See what I, this is one pack that I made where I actually Velcroed a nickel metal pack. Okay, to the to the bottom of my servo tester, so I have it all there. It's all just sort of one-stop shopping here. So, um, you know, when I plug this in, it goes live, and I just have one unit to deal with. So, um, I'll often use on this kind of thing too um, a uh, a servo extender too, so I can you know <clears throat> you know don't have to have this right at the airplane. But um, that thing is gone for some reason. So let's see this. Let's take. Uh, let me go. I'm in manual mode. Let me plug in the gear. And let's see if we can get this to come down. Uh, let's see what we got here. It should be plugged in right, I think. So let's uh, let's see if we can drop that we those wheels. There we go. That is it. As advertised. Look how nice that is. Okay. Let me do this. Let me see if I can find real quick a servo extension. So I'm not. Oh yeah, I do have one right here. Hang on, guys. Just so I don't have to do this from a thousand or plugged into the airplane. Yeah, it's way easier to do this. So here's my servo extension here, like I talked about. That way I can put the box down here. <clears throat> I can plug my extender into here and I can do it from afar uh, without having to be right on top of it. Um, um, and uh, yeah, that's good. So, so let's flip this upside down. We'll take a quick look at the, the gear cycling. Everybody can kind of get in on that's pretty nice, very nice. This, these actually spring load open. If it snaps closed, just open it up. And then you can see, uh, here, let me angle this a little bit so everybody can kind of see the gear. Um, this is truly right out of the box, folks. I hadn't really messed with this, so. Oh, did I plug that in right? No, I probably just didn't. Hang on a second, let me flip this around. Let's get that, uh, hang on a second. Ugh, 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 banging this thing up. This thing can take a. My, uh, my desk is going nuts. It has a mind of its own sometimes if I put, put something down on that switch. So sorry about that little technical, technical difficulties there. Let's see if this is going to work from afar. Yep, there we go. It wasn't liking that for a second. It's still not liking it. What's with that? Let's go minus. No, oh, it's still not liking that for a second. Maybe I got a bad wire. Shoot, that might be a bad wire. All right, well, let's put it back into that thing then. Here we go. Let's see what we got. All right, for some reason now that's not working. Let's see. There we go. Nope, now they're not working on me. Let's see. Not sure why that is. Maybe I got a dead battery. Let's see. I am not sure why that's not extending now. Let's see what's up with that. There we go. Nope. Still doesn't want to work for me. You know, the technical difficulties of this. Well, that worked right out of the box before. Let's see. I am not sure why that's not working, guys. Let's see. Let's try that one more time. Here, you know what? Let's try another. Let's see if I got a different tester. I do have another tester sitting down here. Let's see what we got. Uh, there we go. Let's see if that one's going to work. Maybe I got a bad tester in this or something here. Let's pull that out. Pull that out. Go with a different battery here, or a different uh, different tester. Maybe that's something going on with that one or something. Let's try that. No, nope. well, something's not right. It's hard to say. Let's see. Well, it came down. That's all that's important, right? <laughs> Let's see. All right. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, that's bizarre. Well, it came down. It's not going back up. All right, well, we got the gear down. <laughs> I'll mess with it later or something. Not sure exactly why that's not coming down, but you can see the landing gear. 
and the spring-loaded doors here. I'll try plugging it in here in a second. I'm not sure why it's not working suddenly, but uh, you got spring-loaded center doors, little sticks that they'll they'll hit on, and then uh, this goes up and down. And you got your steerable nose wheel, which I actually have on a separate channel. Here, let's try real fast. I'm going to try it again by putting that back in. Let's see what we can do here. -da -da -da. Yeah, the difficulty of live videos sometimes. That's strange. I wonder why that's not. It's kind of funky. I should be able to get that going. Oh, I, oh, that's what I did. Hang on. I think I flipped the. Checking these out. All right, well, let's do this. Here's what I'll do. When I usually have this kind of problem and I can't get the gear to go up or down, I'll, I'll just do an individual. Let's try this. Yeah, they all came down like a champion. All right, let's do one at a time. Let's try, let's try just the nose. See what the nose is doing. Kind of strange that that happened. That one doesn't seem to want to. Mm -mm. That's bizarre. Let's try the mains now. See what the mains are doing. Very strange. I'm not sure why that's not going up and down now. That's uh, very odd. Very odd. Came down nice. Yep, that is, uh, that is unusual. Well, the good news is, is that I do have the other one. You know what? That might really be a battery issue. Hang on a sec. Let me try a different battery. Give me one sec, guys. I'm going to walk around here. I had another one on the charger here. Let me step over here. Give me a second. All right, let's see. This one says it's done. This is in six volts. Here, we'll try another. It could be an old battery, because I, I use a lot of very old batteries for my testing like this, so maybe that's what we got going on. Let's try this. Let's see, uh, let's plug that in. That's what it is, no. Trying different settings. Wow, that's very weird. Came down once. It just don't make no sense. All right, well, I guess I'll mess with that later, and I'll show you with the other airplane. I'm not sure why that's not uh, why that's not cycling. That should cycle. Let me try my other servo uh, tester one more time with this battery. Let's see. Very weird. All right, let's try just the main gear. Let's do that. I'll tell you what, I'm going to try my little tightening thing and see if maybe that's what it is. Let's look and see. Let me see if I can get this uh, in place. Right, here we go. Tighten. Tighten. All right, let's see if that helps. Yep. Yep. Well, I guess that demonstrates the point. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't have thought they would have all been like that. Here, let's try tightening the other one. I'm just taking my hobby knife, like I show in my video, okay? And I'm just going to put, in fact, I'll try to zoom in. You know, I guess that's a good way to demonstrate the point is by having it happen with all these connectors. Again, these connectors come out of boxes, you know, and like probably hundreds and thousands. So, uh, if you watch that video, it will show you how to just very carefully, um, and sometimes you have to remove this thing, but just push down on that little metal tab right there. And what that'll do is that'll tighten your connection. Um, one connection that's bad can ruin your day. Or just, in, like for example, right now, you just saw it. I was, I was kind of shocked because usually it's like one connector or so, but it looks like all of these were like that. So here, let's plug all this back in. Jeez, I was getting demoralized there. Uh, let's see. Let me plug this back in. Uh, guess you got to practice what you preach there, huh? Here, let's put this uh, put this all back in. And then what I'm also going to do with this back in place is uh, I'm going to tighten these too. Let me zoom in on this. Zoom in on this. Okay. And same deal. I'm going to tighten the three of these on the on the uh, on the uh, on the Y harness right here. So we'll push that. Well, I think I might have made a believer out of you guys today. Uh, 
Yeah, that's not something I was expecting. Sometimes you get a batch of connectors that are just loose. So, you know, just tighten them up like I show in that video. So check out that video. Hopefully now I'll get another like 100 hits on that video. <laughs> so, um, well, here, let's plug them all in on the Y harness here. Let's see what we got. And let's see if we've got, uh, yeah, we've got all three working. So, hey, guys, there you go. That's proof positive that that video I made, you know, and tightening your connectors, it makes a big deal. There I had three. They were all, they probably all, what it is is they probably all came out of the same box. Not a big deal. It's just a, a simple, you know, kind of tightening of the thing. So, um, and that's it. So let me take this out like I was going to do before. Let me put the battery out here. Uh, and in fact, you know what I can do to actually, you know what I can do? I can leave the battery in here. That's what, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the battery in and I'm going to go with the lights too. Let's plug in our lighting package on this thing, just so you guys can see what it looks like. Here, let's go with this. Let's go with, let's see if all those are working. Check your connections. Save your plane. That might turn out to be one of the better videos I've made. Um, it's not just BS. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm going to close this. Actually, you know what I can do here? I can do this is even better. Let's put... Um, Let's flip this around real quick, and I'll show everybody. Let's take a look at the lighting package on this. We'll zoom in. See your wingtip lights right there? You know, very, very bright on there, very cool. Here, and let's go around to, to this light, you know, nice and bright there. There it is. And then uh, your top light on your belly on the back right there. And then we'll go to the uh, underside right there. Nice bright red light. That's like a beam, too. I think it points... I think it just beams down. See that? It makes a nice beam of light down there. So, you know, if you're landing in dusk, it'll light the ground up for you in the flare, which is, uh, which is kind of cool. So, anyway, back to the landing gear issue here. Let's look at, uh, let me flip it this way so you guys can see how nice uh, the gear is on this thing. Let me, uh, let me back up a little bit. Let me lower this a bit. And, uh, you know, here we go. Let's, uh, let's drop the gear. Put this around. And there it is, really nice. So um, there's no suspension in the gear. It is a small plane, okay? So, um, but they're pretty tough. They're all four millimeter wires, okay? They've got some movement to them. Again, you've got these inner spring-loaded doors that with this little pin that, uh, you know, the, the gear just kind of kind of grabs and it takes those, uh, those center doors in with it. So pretty nice. Um, one caveat to it again, if for some reason these doors get knocked in, and you cycle your gear, it'll stick, but that's okay. It's not like it's not going to come down. Just make sure these are open on the ground. They are spring-loaded. They probably have to work. The spring probably, it's kind of a weak spring. And also, I've got the airplane upside down. So when it's right side up, you know, it'll function a lot better. So let me get, uh, let me do it this way. So you guys can see that, you know, it does go up and down nice. Let me flip the, uh, flip the wheel here. Uh, I'll get that going there. So, um, and not a big deal. They go in nice. They open and close nice. Pretty sweet gear overall. The the no nose well is very nice. Let me, let me zoom in there for everybody. You can kind of see see all that detail down in there. Um, and there's your wires. If you've got a wire flapping around. You can tape it down. But it looks like it looks like everything's in there pretty good. Steering linkage is in there real nice. I don't have that connected yet, you know. But I'll show you this on the uh, on the completed model. But it's got this little mechanism right down there that when the wing, when the landing gear goes in the well and it strikes this, that's what closes the door. So, so again, never fear if it gets stuck going up. Okay, it's but it won't come. It shouldn't stick going down. Hopefully, so that's really uh, kind of the gist of uh, of how well that works. See it close up. See it strikes that plate, moves it in. Very nice nose gear, nose gear door well. Nice foam tires. Put a little foam tack, guys on your E-rings, there is one E-ring right here. The main gear doesn't have it. The main gear just actually has the door right here, and I'll get close on that. You can see the door just combines right there, and you got a, uh, in fact, let me back off on here. You've got a pretty cool spring-loaded door. It's, it's actually pretty sharp how, you know, you've got a spring-loaded door that, that just stays attached to that inner door, and then when you retract the thing, um, it, uh, It'll close. So here, let's go with that again. You can guys see it on the back, how nice that is. So all nice doors. You've got three doors per main gear and uh, two doors per nose. So
So pretty sharp all the way around. So that works real well. What I'm going to do here is go full angle here. Let's do this. Works real nice. Everything's working good. So I can't say it further or reiterate any further, but you know, you know guys, check your, <laughs> you know, check your connections. But, uh, but don't check them all. Just check the ones that you want, you know, to work. <laughs> so anyway, uh, very cool. So let's do a, a quick, uh, let me get the lights. I'm going to do the lights out. You ready? We'll do this. We'll see how it looks in the, in the, uh, in the darkness here. So let me go ahead and drop the lights here. I'm going to lower a shade so you guys can see the lighting package at night. It's pretty nice. I am probably going to put my own landing light on it because I think that would be pretty cool. So, but there, that'll give you an idea with a little bit of dark darkness here. You guys can see what this is like. Um, it'll be funny if I get an overhead camera here. You guys will be able to see how much, uh, how much is actually um, the disaster, the obstacle course that I have to walk around to get around here. It's actually a pretty big room. I'm just in the corner of it, so, and I've got all my working stuff out here, so. But there, you guys can see, in fact, look at that light shining against the wall. That's the wing light, so, and I still have light coming through the window over there, so. Uh, but you can see the lighting package, it's very, very bright. You can see when you go to land, this light will be touching the ground, so that'll probably help you in the flare. But I'm pretty impressed, man. This is a nice little, little airplane with a, you know, decent assembly. I mean, assembling it's pretty easy. Quality is very nice. Um, it's got nice lights on. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the light back here. Look at the, how bright that thing is on the uh, on the back deck of this thing. That's pretty. That's pretty sharp. It's very nice. Nice and bright lights. Go to the underbelly one. Nice and bright there. Like I said, I think I just need a landing light. Um, I think if I was going to ask for one more thing on this plane, which I think you get a lot for the money actually, is I would want a a, a leading edge light because I think I think. I think, if I'm not mistaken, T28s have a light up here or something, but I'll probably stick one in the nose gear or something. Um, but I'm pretty impressed. Look at, that, look at the light on the wall there, on the back, on the side there. Um, it's, it's a pretty bright, very nice bright, uh, bright lights with very nice uh, lenses around them. Nice foam wheels all the way around. So all we got to do is get this thing really up and rolling. So let me stick this one down here or on the side here. Let me put that there. And then I'll get the other airplane out so you guys can see that. Let me see if I can turn this in such a way. Yeah, let's try it like this. I'll leave this plugged in because it's just the lights. It's nothing that's going to go too crazy on us. So let me get the, uh, get, the, uh, get the light back on here. I'm going to have to get myself a remote for the, the light switch on the wall here now. Get that on. Okay. And is everybody ready? All right. Drum roll, please. Okay, here we go, guys. Da -da 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 and there is the one I completed. This is the, um, and, and it took really about the same effort to stick it together, but, you know, this is the red training version of the airplane. I'm going to pull up my clipboard. Yeah, this is the, uh, this is the, uh, the training squadron VT-5, okay? Same exact airplane, different paint job. Again, check them out at Banana Hobby. Very nice model. The detail is all the same. The difference on this one, though, is this one I got a receiver in it. I hadn't mounted it all yet, but it should uh, should work out okay. Let me try to get, um, let me see if I've got, I think I got a battery in there. I think I actually put this, the funny thing is, is I actually put this on my NX-10. The reason for it is, I mean, it's a, I mean, it really is a six-channel airplane. I mean, you got aileron, elevator, rudder, throttle, flaps, gear, but it also has a speed brake if you want to use a speed brake. That's a seventh channel. So if you put in a stabilizer, that's really all you need. I mean, you really only need six to fly this thing. Seven if you want the speed brake. Eight if you want to separate your nose wheel steering on a separate knob, which is what I, you guys know I usually do that with a lot of my planes. Not all of them, though. Sometimes you want your nose gear and your rudder combined on a Y harness if you're using a flight stabilizer because it's gonna stabilize both. Even rolling down the runway, it's gonna steer your rudder. So it just depends on how you have it set up, stabilizer, non-stabilizer, whether you wanna use, you know, um, um, wh whether you wanna use that, that nose wheel steering channel or not. So, so again, minimum six channel, really to fly this. 
Um, technically five if you wanted to lock out your flaps, because I don't think this plane's gonna need flaps so much. So, um, but really minimum six, seven if you wanna use your speed brake, eight if you wanna go, you know, um, with the nose wheel steering, and then really back to seven again if you, um, if you um, are using a, um, a flight stabilizer, because it, again, you can keep your nose gear and your rudder hooked together. So, but let's do this. Let's put this, uh, here are a couple things about this I want everybody to see. This thing's got some fantastic nose art on it as well. Okay. They got a girl on there. You know, I'm into girls on planes and stuff. That's really cool. Easy gin. So very cool uh, decal that they applied on there. And, um, you know, like I said in the back, this is the, uh, the USS Lexington VT-5. So training aircraft, you know, training number. And a couple things to note about this one. This one's just about ready to go. You can see I've got, let me zoom in here. You can see this one I went ahead and fully put together. I've got all my rods, horns, linkages, fuel tubing. You can see there in blue, all the way around. You can see the tape is nicely applied. This one functions real nice out of the box as well, just like the, just like the one we just put together. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna activate my throttle cut first. <laughs> And then we're going to plug this in. So um, I just plug this in pretty simply, folks, um, with just an orange receiver without any flight stabilization. I hadn't secured the receiver yet, but it's in there. I got this thing together yesterday. Oh, another note, too, is I want to show you what I did, okay, here with the screws. Remember I told you they were too long, okay? I just went short, as you can see here, okay? Um, and then let me go to the outer one. See, I cut those short, too. So if you guys use... Again, a set of diagonal pl pliers, uh, okay, or use, um, use a Dremel tool like I used. Um, either one, um, you know, you can shorten those. Again, just don't use a Dremel tool while these are attached like this because the heat can melt or probably will melt that nylon and the foam. So if you choose to do it that way, just do it, you know, off the airplane, that's all, and just put the screws back on. So again, you can shorten your screws to, to work out okay. And uh, what we'll do is we'll plug this in. Let's see, throttle's down, landing gear's down. And uh, let's go ahead and plug this baby in. And we will show this one to you too. So we'll get that going in there. Oh, no, hang on a sec. Probably selecting a model memory and turning the radio on first would probably help, right? So you can see here, I went ahead and uh, on my NX-10, I went ahead and I assigned uh, uh, Easy Gin, T28 Red Banana Hobby, Red Easy Gin. And then also, um, let me show you real quick. Um, uh, I did activate the flap system. So I am operating flaps. This is how I have it set up for now. We'll talk about this a little more when I fly the airplane. Those are the settings I needed, speed of three on the flap system. Um, and then I also put in a mix, okay, which I'll show you here. There is a mixing, which you guys can see right here. I made a nose wheel steering mix. That's what it looks like. So you guys could always reference this to see what it looks like when you, if you wanted to do that. And you can see my mix one is rudder is master, aux two is slave, rates minus 125, and there's no switch. Okay, so now I have it, um, um, I have that all set up so I have the separate nose wheel steering. I assigned the switch, I went into switch assignments, and I assigned the nose wheel steering to my knob. So. Yeah, let me plug this in. Safety is on, flaps are up, gears down. Let me plug this in. Again, folks, this is your, right here, this is your two connectors, okay? I'm gonna slide this over just a little bit. There we go, hopefully it'll come into focus here. Okay, um, you can use an XT60 with an EC5 or an EC3, okay? You cannot use an XT90, the big yellow ones, with an EC5 or IC5. The bullets are different sizes. If you're not sure if the bullet was gonna fit in there tight or not, all I do is I usually will put two of these together kind of backwards like this. I'll put one connector in, and if I can feel that metal biting in there, then I know it's a good enough of a connection, okay? But the, the, again, the XT90s with an EC5 or IC5, you don't wanna fly like that. You can cause a, a major meltdown of your, uh, <laughs> of your, uh, your connector because they, they don't make a really good very good connection. So anyway, we'll go ahead and plug this in. Safety's on. Everything's going. Let's get this. Uh, let me get my uh, my thing down here. Let me get the uh, get our zoom fully out. 
and we can see this thing in all its glory. What I'm going to do for now is I'm going to take the Jolly Roger and just park him over here. I'm going to get him down. I got an Ernst stand down here. Going on the Ernst stand. Let's go down to here so we can all see this. And this is all plugged in and ready to go. I have noticed that um, the servos on this plane are very smooth. I was actually really impressed. My, my starting position for these things is going to be, and I'm going to flip it this way. This is going to be my starting position when I fly this stuff, just so you guys can see for now. Um, and I'll talk about this during the flight. But you can see the hole in the horn. I'm using the third hole from the center to start with. The flap, I think I'm using the same thing, either the second or the, am I using the same one? Yeah, I'm using the same one, the third one out. Um, Elevator, same deal. So that's my starting position on all these things. Um, with fuel tubing, of course, wrapped around everything. Um, uh, and that's, that's about it. But let's take a look at, and I'll show you here, the, the ailerons on this thing. You know, so far, very smooth servo control. They're not ratchety or anything. They seem to work real well. I've got a heck of a lot of light coming in here, don't I, from this light. Um, but, and then there's our flap movement. You can see our flaps coming down. Let me angle this a little bit. Sometimes what happens is, is the, when you have a bright white airplane, it gets overexposed in the camera. The camera can't interpret the bright white all that well. So, um, and then of course we have our, uh, speed brake right down there. I set the speed brake up on an entirely separate channel, as you can see here. And I set it up on one second one second travel, because I want it to be very, very quick. In case I want to slow the airplane down, you just pop the speed brake, slow it down, and put it back up. I'm not sure about landing with it yet, but we'll kind of, we'll mess with that as I, as I, um, you know, kind of get into this a little bit more, but uh, let me, uh, let me pan out a little more, but uh, here, let me drop, uh, drop the flaps again. You guys can see how nice, those are working fantastic. Flaps, speed brakes, very cool stuff. It works Works fantastic. Flaps going up. Again, nice smooth aileron control. It looks like I've got plenty of deflection. What I did is I sent mine up, and here's how you tell a good servo from a bad servo too, or maybe a cheapy one from a non-cheapy one or something, but is that I have with this thing right now, my ailerons with that hole are set up for 125% travel, and I'm getting full resolution, full movement out of it. So, and then I can go down to 100, and I can go down to 70. So I've got three settings to work with. 125 should be more than enough on that third hole. 100 should work well. 70 should work well too. So I'll just play all that by ear, you know, as I, you know, kind of get out there and fly it. And we'll talk about that again during the, during the flight. So, uh, and that's it. Elevator travels real good. I got 125 set in here. Uh, let's see. You can see the movement I have in the elevator right there. It's a good amount. Okay, I can go to a, uh, uh, to a medium and a low setting as well, so for higher speed flying. So, well, real nice, yeah, very cool. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to kill, I'm going to kill the lights here because I think the camera's overexposing the, the lens with this white color. The airplane's very bright white, so it does stand out well. Let's get that. So that'll probably cut some of that overexposure out of there. And that is it. Let me turn this around. Let's see, my desk is running away, and that's it. See those lights on the wall? Look at that. Look at the light down here, how bright those are. You know, very, very neat. Very cool, very cool airplane. So, and, uh, you know, there you have it. Um, all right, guys, we've seen the T-28. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, talk to me, guys. You guys have any questions about it? You guys want to throw... Uh, yeah, well, you know what? Uh, Pilot Jerry RC said, damn, retracts can be so fussy. It wasn't the retracts that were fussy. It was the connectors. The connectors just weren't, weren't clamped down. You can have an intermittent contact where you have an intermittent flight control, intermittent gear, intermittent ESC, which is kind of bad because that's all the power that's coming in through that VEC. So check all your connectors, guys. Watch that video that I made. You know, that's kind of for everybody's uh, sort of benefit there to, so everybody can kind of get an idea of a, Look at that blue light. That is just crazy how bright these things are. Very nice model. But uh, hey, guys, throw some questions. If you guys got questions, throw them out there. 
Uh, let me check my stream quality. It's still saying stream quality is excellent, so <coughs> let's see. Uh, yeah, they're both real nice schemes. Nice pinup girl on there. That's from Curtis Curtis, Carlos Cordova. Uh, same as Hobby King Troja, I think. Yeah. Uh, HK is nice too. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, do the speed break. All right, here I'll do the speed break again. Do the roar. Do the roar. Does anybody know what that's from? Let's see. Let's go back here. There's your speed break. All right, there we go. You guys can see that coming out. Again, I got mine set up on a one second speed with two settings. Very neat, very neat, works very well. Uh, landing gear on this is working super nice too. Here, let's flip it, uh, you know, flip it upside down. I don't think we did that, let's give it a whirl here. Um, very slick retracts. A stuck door, and they're not always perfect all the time. But uh, there we go. Yeah, they're coming out, going in nice. Very cool. Man, that door's sticking a little bit. Well, yeah, there's the pain of retract. Sometimes that happens, but it's good. Speed brake. Yeah, let's go speed brake. End flaps, landing gear. There's all the stuff out. That's pretty cool. With all the drag out, man. There you go. There you go, all the drag out. VSO, carrier deck landing there with all your drag out. Yeah, very, very neat, very, very neat model. I think they got a winner with this, guys. It's very nice. Uh, I'm going to try and get one out this weekend to fly for sure for everybody. So, you know, you know, check it all out at Banana Hobby. Um, if you guys do want to help out, you know, you check out my links below in the description. Um, just so you guys know, when I picked up my throttle, my airplane, I had bumped my throttle to full, okay, while it was sitting there on the table. I didn't even notice it. But that's why I had my safety switch. So, you know, keep in mind, get a safety, you know, if you don't, guys don't have a throttle cut on your radio, set it, because it, it will just save you like it did me. So <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, um, but super nice, folks. I'm going to put here, let me get the speed brakes up, flaps up. Um, yeah, any questions, guys? Anything you want me to show you that I haven't shown you on this airplane yet? Because we're going to get the, um, uh, in fact, here, let's do this. Um, again, guys, if you guys want to get one of these, if you guys decide to buy one or your friends want to get one or something, just tell them to come to my video and use my link in the description right below the video. If you click on that, it takes you to Banana Hobby, and then you put that in your cart from there, you know, find the plane and buy it. As long as you go through my cart, we get a little commission. It doesn't cost you guys anything. It doesn't cost you guys a dime. Um, so I like keeping things free. Free is good. Free for free free, right? Uh, <coughs> EQ says it changed color. Uh, can you install a strobe light system? Yeah, you can put whatever you want in this. You can load this thing up with lights, all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, let me go, uh, let's do this. Let me light up, light up the website. Okay, so if you guys click on my link and, uh, you know, go uh, to Banana Hobby, and you guys can see right here, if you guys go, in fact, let me see if I can widen this and go full. I'm gonna block my own my own self out here. Let's see. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, there we go. I'll just make it huge. Let's see if I can shrink it from here. All right, here we'll try to. I gotta get a new mouse pad on my my computer. It's not doing what I want it to do. So, okay. So if you guys click on my link in the description below the video and go to this thing, okay. What you can do is you can go up to where it says electric aircraft, right here. Oh, why is that not working? Oh, sorry about that. My bad. Uh, here, let's do this. You can go right to electric aircraft, okay? Um, and it'll give you a picture. You can even click on it or you can just hover over it and then just go down to Warbirds, the military stuff. And there's the P-40. And you scroll down, there's the, the, the Spitfire we did. They got that cool desert Spitfire camo. And um, there's your Jolly Rogers T-28 pictures I took. And, um, you know, there's the... Uh, there's the Navy trainer one I'm showing you now. So, and anything you buy through here, guys, after coming through my link, it, 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 like I said, we get a little commission, supports the channel, doesn't cost you guys a penny, and uh, we do appreciate that support. I'm always trying to bring you guys, like I said, the best stuff I possibly can, and, uh, you know, um, showing you guys how to get it going, how to set it up, and so uh, we really appreciate you guys doing that for us. It's awesome. So, anyway, but nice planes, guys, at Banana Hobby. So, um, you know, check it out there. I got links below for it and other planes and other stuff. So let me uh, let me kill the website here. 
And let me put these two planes out here for you guys to peruse a little bit. We got a lot more stuff to cover, guys. We're going to go into the, the P-40 Flying Tiger as well here. So, But there you go, guys. Here's your two, two T-28s, brand new up at Anahabi. These are brand new airplanes there. And, uh, you know, check them out. They're very nice. Again, six-channel minimum. Um, Seven-channel preferred if you want to use the speed brake. And um, very easy to put together. Um, uh, I'm flying this one. Actually, this one is going to be eight cell because or eight uh, um, uh, eight channel because I don't have I don't have a stabilizer in it. So I'm using the eighth channel for the nose wheel steering. So um, kind of like you guys have seen in the past, my nose wheel steering and rudder they do work together. But on just a knob, let me see if I can. Let me see if I can get this going backwards here or forwards here. Let's go. There we go. With just using the knob on the radio, okay, which is right here, okay, I can steer my nose wheel without affecting the rudder, the flight rudder. So the flight rudder doesn't move when I'm doing that. So, um, but very slick. So again, you can go, you can make this an eight channel and have all that in there again. And you can plug a flight stabilizer in it still. You know, it's entirely up to you, but but very full featured, you know, little airplane. Very, very nice. So uh, let me pull up my, uh, my question, uh, my, uh, my chat board here, see who all has got uh, maybe some questions or something. So let's see, uh, Jackson, haven't been watching the chat for a while. Well, yeah, I haven't been watching it. Uh, Rich, show us the receiver location. Um, well, you know what? I got to tell you, I haven't put it in there I haven't fully secured it yet. In fact, let me get, uh, here, let me minimize this thing real quick. Uh, give me a second. I just changed my window. More buttons to press here. Hang on. I haven't really mounted the receiver fully yet. It's just kind of sitting in there. It's all plugged in and it's working and everything. So let me put this down here and I'm going to get the lights on. And then we got another box to open, guys. It's not over yet. There's more. Wait, there's more. Let's see here. Let's get this on. All right, walking around my shop here. Sorry, guys. Get here. All right, receiver for now. Again, it's just kind of hovering in there. Um, I'll show you guys here. All I did was really for right now is just put the receiver. I'll zoom in there. Uh, where's my remote? Remote there. We'll zoom in. All I used was just an orange, you know, sitting around. So I just take that. I'm going to Velcro this probably right right down there. It doesn't need to be in any, any particular place. And then the battery, I have a three cell in here right now. I'm probably going to put a four. Okay. And that's just going to probably get Velcroed right to the center right there. And this is all flight video stuff, guys, I'll talk about. Okay. So, so I'll get into that once I secure all this. I just put it, these are brand new guys. I just got these like the other day and I just put this one together yesterday. So, so I just have to secure those things, get the throws and everything set right. And we will go out and, uh, you know, we'll fly it around for sure. So super nice. Uh, anyway, let's see what else we got. Uh, Jackson Aviation just came back in. When are the next 105 EDS jets coming uh, from Banana Hobby? Like any, like any day now. In fact, um, the L39, um, the one you need the fan and ESC like the one I have, those I think are there now, but there's the receiver ready versions showing up like I, I think they're like at the middle to end of April. So be looking for those. Those are going to show up. And then the next one's coming that I'm going to be showing you guys is going to be the, I think it's the Italian, the MB339. In fact, uh, uh, what I can do is pull that. I think it's on the web page. Yeah, let me look at uh, standby, standby one here. Let me get, uh, let me go back to website for you guys. There we go. Let me go back to... Uh, here, let's look at it real quick. So if you guys go to Banana Hobby through my link, go to EDF Jets, go to Foam Jets. There's your L39. You got the, uh, well, the pre-orders. The it looks like the CCCP one is in stock right now. I, I think you guys, let me just double check. You guys are seeing that, right? Yeah, you guys are seeing that okay with me there. So, all right. And then, um, oh, shoot, maybe they don't have it up there yet. Or maybe it's not up. 
I guess uh, I guess maybe it's not up. But what I can do though, what we can do, let me do this for you guys. If you want to take a quick look, I think let me cross my fingers here. Go to turbine jets. Go to foam jets. Click on that, and there is one of your global aerofoam uh, Italian Air Force MB 339s. Okay, and that's one of the, I think, one of the paint jobs. There's another one. I'm going to have a different paint job to show you guys. This is just the turbine version. Again, same, same as the electric. You know, only the electric is going to have, um, the electric is going to have, um, um, obviously, an electric fan in there. So, um, here is uh, another MBB 339, and then here's a diamond that's going to be coming. I don't know. I'm going to have a diamond to show you guys, too, to show you. This is going to be the, the one that's uh, kind of like the Hobby King, King Sky Sword. Okay, this is the aerofoam that you can see on the picture here. Um, but these are big. They're going to be 105 millimeter. So, you know, those are going to be coming. That's what I was saying, guys. Check out the, you know, keep your eye on the Banana Hobby site because all this is coming through, you know, uh, any day now. So it's going to be here. And I'm going to have, I'll be showing you guys that stuff. So, um, you know, stay tuned here. We'll have it all for you and how to set it up. So, um, I think I'm going to get one of those diamonds to show you guys, I think, in like a Thunderbird scheme or something, I think is what I'm going to be showing you all. So let's see. Let me see if I can go up through here. Yeah, oh, there's, a MiG, there's the MiG-17. That's nice. So again, new stuff showing up all the time. Banana Hobby, it's coming real quick. So uh, all right, let's see. Got the chat log up. Uh, so that's when the next 105s are coming. Love the T28. Ro jo the Jolly Roger is me all day. That's Air Hammer. All right. Please use my link, buddy, if you get one. Appreciate that. Um, add nose steering on my planes. It makes adjusting the nose much easier. That's right. You got it. I do it on every plane that I possibly can. Uh, oh, yeah. Victor RC EDF says, yes, the T45 is coming. There's a 105 millimeter T45 coming. It's got slats. Speed brakes in the back, 105 millimeter. It's going to be awesome. There's really not much competition out there for that. It's going to be nice. Uh, let's see. I remember FMS made a speed brake cooling flap years ago in the cowling of the T20. They did away with it on the never on the newer model. Not sure why. Uh, Ian, they probably did it. It was a cool effect, but it really didn't do much other than kind of make the plane more expensive and more complicated, you know? So I think they just took them out to simplify it. Uh, yeah, it was cool having them. I did like them. I thought that was kind of a neat, neat, neat uh, thing. Um, yeah, all the 105s for Mark Adkins and Pete from Germany there. Um, all the 105 millimeters that are coming from Banana Hobby, they're at least 12 cell. And in fact, if you want to put your own larger fan in it, something that runs on 14 cell, you can do that too. So it's entirely up to you. Uh, not the not the receiver ready version, but the sort of like the plug and play version of it, you know, is going to be like that. So um, and you can do whatever you want. But yes, the stock setup it's intended for a 12 cell 105 millimeter fan of whatever kind you want to put in there. Uh, Jackson RC Aviation, when are you coming to Maryland? Actually, I'm from Maryland. I I was, I was kind of born in Bethesda. I was actually from I'm from Maryland. So uh, well, I uh, tell me when when and where if you guys got an event, I can come up. You know, let me know. Keep me informed. Um, let me check my phone real quick, guys. I'll take a quick uh, kind of two-second break. Uh, uh, okay, she said she's doing that. I just, I'm just i monitoring some things going on. Oh. Uh, she'll figure it out. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I had some other things going on. Um, oh, that's right. I was supposed to send her. Oops. My bad. Uh, here, let me do this. Uh, let me send. Hang on. I got to do one thing, guys. I got to do a little bit of a... My daughter's supposed to go to uh, get her hair kind of done with uh, my sister, so and she doesn't know the address, so it would be good for me to send that. Let's do this real quick. Uh... Let's share this. Let's share this with, give me one second, guys. Sorry about that. Now let's send that and see if that'll go through. There we go. I got it. All right, thanks, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> There's so much stuff going on at one time. All right, guys. Any last questions with this thing? 
because uh, what we're going to do is it's, it's P40 time. We are, we are not done yet. We have not yet begun to unbox and assemble here. So uh, let's do this. Let me, uh, let me close this up. I'm looking at my big screen here. Let's close this up. Let me unplug all the dangerous electron things that are plugged in here. And we're going to get to the next plane. So, all right, guys, that's technically an unboxing and a, it was two unboxings. So I just, yeah, I just got one together yesterday. I figured it might be easier rather than taking all three out of the box. But you get the gist. Beautiful airplanes all the way around. This one's unplugged. Let me drop this one down here. I'm just going to put this one, store this one. Let me put this down. There we go. I'll put that over there. Let me get over here. Let me unplug this one before it starts smoking and the lights burn out. But uh, yeah, check these out, guys. Banana Hobby, very nice stuff coming from them. Let me unplug all of this. Get my thing out. Get that out of there. We are good to go. All right, raise your hand if you're ready for yet another unboxing video. Banana Hobby style. Everybody ready? Um, let me take, if anybody's got questions, you know, please throw them out there. Um, I will take a look real quick. I'm going to turn my radio off because I don't need that on anymore. And uh, let's get that off of there. There we go. I'm going to put this back in my radio case. These NXs are nice too. I know you guys have seen a bunch of these, but it's so nice that the antenna folds down and you don't have that appendage sticking out. It's, it's, it's pretty darn nice that they did that. Let me close that up, and we will get out another box. Yes, another box. Yet another box. Look at that. What on earth is that? Someone asked me the other day when we put some boxes up, we posted some boxes. Somebody said, hey, what's that, uh, what's that big flat box? That's what it was. <laughs> it was the P40. So. Uh, you know, if you guys were wondering, that was what was in that big box. So I'm going to take a tiny snack break, guys, while I'm looking at y'all's posts and stuff. Better late than never. I'm late to the party. But here now, that's Dale R.B. Sr. And Mike Bird just showed up. Um, OEO 1977 said, you know, but I guess it has oleo suspension. Six cell. I'm not sure what you guys are talking about, but there we go. Awesome. P40. Yeah, we're getting into the P40, man. I love the Flying Tiger. Let's see. This is an N model. Uh, where is it? Oh, of course, I did it upside down. Let's see here. All right, here we go. Here we go. We're turning this around. Let's go. All right, guys, available at Banana Hobby. Check it out. This one's got a magnetic bomb drop, the whole deal. Here we go, here we go. Yeah, let's look at that. All right, I'm gonna throw this over here. All right, guys, that is what that looks like. That is it. I did a, a cut all the tape. I took some of these out because I had to take pictures of the darn thing. So that was um, why it, it did show up out of the box. Excuse me, guys, while I just take a short snack break. I'm looking at your, looking at the chat log. Steve George, Sultana is here, he says. Let's see who else is in the house here. Um, Fred Katz is here. Mikey likes it. Mikey says, I um, hope they bring out the sky, bring in the Sky Raider. I tell you, the Banana Hobby, I tell you, they got cool stuff coming. There's a, no, there's a couple more coming, too. I don't I'm talk about them just yet, but there's more stuff coming. So, um, Dale R.B. Sr., wow. OEO, I thought it was four or six. OEO 1977, the answer to your question is yes. Some of them were, serv they were previously sold as such. So... But they were always the nicest Duraflyers, made the nicest stuff. But very cool. 
Richard Webb is here. EQRC says, Rich, um, is the decals better than the old one? Are you talking about, uh, Eric, are you talking about the, uh, the P-40? Is that what you're saying? Because they're, they're actually already on the airplane. Yeah, P-40 N model. So here's, um, here we'll get to start getting this out. I still have all the rods and linkages from the other T-28 I got to get together, but there's our spinner. Let's see what we got here. This is the under the chin uh, cow flaps, actually. Uh, individual prop blades here. Look at all that. I just got to take a break, guys. I've been doing two hours straight with this, but um, look, they even give you, this is nice. There's even a, um, there's even a power adapter for, uh, looks like an XT60 to a, uh, a Dean's type thing. Wow, nice ball length. Wow, look at that. That's cool. There's some nice ball lengths in this thing. Here, let me zoom in. Yeah, some of these planes have nice linkages, man. Look at that thing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. They're nice. They're pretty thick links, too. They're nice. Nice ball links. Yeah, there's your, your adapter right there. So they give you a little Dean's adapter, battery Velcro. Um, there's a pitot tube. Let me move that out of the way. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, there's the pitot tube. Yeah, a couple little glue-on pieces, not a big deal. Um, and then down in that hole, there's a spar. I think that's a tail spar, if I'm not mistaken. So that'll get the horizontal in place. So anyway, okay, breaks over. Actually, one more Slim Jim here. Any more questions coming in? Yeah, I love the P40. Uh, oh, the Durafly decal sucked. Air Hammer said that was me. Um, here, let's see. This is the, this is really nice. It's got a magnetic bomb. Look at this thing. Let's go in on that. Got a little magnet right there, and it's got like a little ro rotating barrel mechanism that you just plug this up into the bottom of the fuselage under the wing. When you hit the switch, it's a separate switch for it. It just rotates the magnet barrel. It just takes it takes the magnet away from this that's holding it on, and then it just falls. So it's pretty nice. It's, got, it's a little weighted too, so it's got some it's got some weight in it. It's a pretty neat a little bomb drop. It works beautifully. Really nice. So, all right, let me pull full uh, full pan out there. And let me get um, really fast. Take a drink. That beef jerky's, uh, or not beef jerky, but the Slim Jims are hot. All right, guys. All right, for those of you who haven't been here or weren't here yet, a couple things uh, before we get into the P40 real quick. Um, um, Seth is coming. We will be there. I will have at least four airplane giveaways for everybody from all the vendors and from you guys. So we're going to have an FMS plane to give away. Um, we're going to have an Arrows and Hobby Zone plane to give you guys too. It's all going to be given to, I'm going to give all of this stuff over to uh, um, to the Seth guys, Bob Bernard, who runs Seth. And they're going to they're gonna raffle all this off. These are all giveaways for everybody. Banana Hobby's going to th throw in two airplanes for everybody, guys. So really awesome. And then, um, and then it's... Um, uh, actually, I'm going to have a Dynam plane. I forgot all about that. I'm going to have a Dynam plane for this event, actually. Uh, Guniac's throwing in two burners. Uh, so we're going to have two burners to give away to everybody. Um, Roaring Top's going to be there. I'll probably have some Ernst stands, too, I think. I think they are sending me those. So we got a lot of giveaways, guys. If you guys want to come to Ceph, Horizon's coming. Flex is coming. They're the big sponsors at the top, you know, like I said before. So... Um, I will have the Draco to show everybody at this event. So it's going to be cool, guys. If you can come to Ceph, uh, it's, a, it's a month out. There it is. Southeast Electric Flight Festival, April 26th, May 1st. Hodges Hobbies. Register at cephweek.com. It's going to be big. I think Joe Nall, because it got canceled a week or two after, whatever. This is usually the lead up to Ceph. So, um, or to Joe Nall, I should say. So if you guys can come to this, come. I'm going to be there. I'm going to have a 20 by 20 canopy. I'll be there the whole darn week. I'm going to have tons of airplanes as we talked about already i mentioned already so if you guys can come to ceph these are all the sponsors i i i vendors and sponsors i went ahead and i made this um um i, I made this flyer right here <laughs> so uh and and i'm spreading it around we'll be putting it on the internet for everybody but all of these companies altitude hobbies lanes planes ernst roaring top guniac so and like i said me personally i'll be bringing 
through these companies and through your support, all the, the vendors up above and everybody, um, through your support of the channel, they're, they're supplying all this free stuff for everybody. It's nice. So, so Horizon will have, I'm sure, plenty of giveaways. Flex will have plenty of giveaways. Um, I'm going to bring, like I said, four to five airplanes from all of these vendors and from you guys. So you guys are going to win this stuff. So it'll be nice. Seth's an awesome field. And, um, you know, it's, it's going to be great. Uh, John Kuhn from Wing It. If you look at my logo <laughs> on the flyer there, um, right below it, just wing it on YouTube. Check out his channel. He doesn't really have a logo, so I just put just wing it on YT on YouTube. So he'll be there. Um, but uh, again, planes from FMS, planes from Banana Hobby, planes from Hobby Zone, um, um, planes from, shoot, I even forgot, I'm like running out of stuff. I'll have something from BitGo. Uh, cancel that out. Um, yeah, Horizon's gonna be there. I'm gonna have all the FMS planes. Like I said, I'm gonna have, yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll run through it again. I'll have, um, I'll have the Rafal Corsair, the new Corsair, the CJ6, ASW17, probably super easy. I'll have the Draco, so if you guys want to see it there, I, I'm pretty sure they're going to have it too, but the plane only ships like a couple days before the event, so, but I'll have a Draco to show everybody at the event and fly and demo. That's going to be a blast. The FW190, F18, the V1200, 140 mile an hour plane, we'll have that. Banana Hobby, we'll have the L39. This is all for you guys. We're going to bring this to show off where you guys can come see it and kick the tires. The V-22, which I got up there, the Osprey, Spitfire, the T-28s, the Aggressor, P-40. Hobby Zone, I'm going to have the new 5S Husky, the SE, uh, to demo there. Um, I'm going to bring the F-15, the MiG, and the Marlin. Um, and from BitGo, I will have the Spitfire on floats, like one of my favorite, coolest float planes. That thing's awesome. PT-17, C-47, maybe one or more from them. So, so keep that in mind, guys. Seth is coming. And then after Seth... I'll reiterate this one more time for the guys who weren't here before. Um, we will uh, also, um, we're going to go over to Imperial RC a week after for the uh, the Ryan event. If I can find it on here. Uh, where the hell is it? No, there it is. Oh, it's below. Uh, hang on a second. Where is that at? Let me get rid. Uh, I might have crashed that. Hang on a second. Let me see if I can get rid of the website then or the chat log. Maybe that's what it is. Give me one second. Uh, what the heck happened to that thing? Hang on a second. Let me light this up. Uh, I'm not sure what happened. Sorry, guys. Oh, here it is. There it is. Um, we'll be at the, the Ryan event there at Imperial RC, May 12th to 16th. Again, this was the event that um, was supposed to actually, this was Joe Nall. I mean, this is when the Joe Nall, but they decided that, hey, since Joe Nall got canceled, people don't have any place to go. Why not as an Imperial just create an event in that time slot so people can go? So I'll be there. And once again, guys, I'm coming there with Banana Hobby. They're donating two airplanes. FMS is throwing in a plane or two or probably some more stuff even. Horizon's going to have some giveaways. Guniac, he's bringing, he's supplying me with two afterburners made to order for you guys. Ernst Manufacturing, they're going to supply some stands for everybody. Um, and then foam tech and beacon adhesives. They've been, I've been working with them for a long time. They're, they're going to supply a bunch of glue too. Free giveaway stuff. So you guys really want to come to these things. So Horizon's going to be stepping up. BitGo also with uh, some Dynam planes. So it's going to be a big time. Both of these events, they're about a week or two or so apart from each other. So uh, we're going to be there, man. We're going to be in full force. We're going to have a huge tent. I'm going to be there with uh, actually Wesley, Mary Boozer, um, uh, Jerry uh, McGee, the club president, and then uh, John Burden too. We're going to kind of get just a gigantic tent. And I'm going to have banners all over the darn place. And so if you guys can make it to this, it's going to be a big time. It's going to be four or five days long, you know, here. So 12th to the 16th. It'll be cool, man, both of these events. So if you guys can come out, come on out to them. So we're going to have, uh, you know, we're going to have a, a nice, like I said, a big time there. So uh, let me uh, close these windows up. Let me close up this one. If I can find it. There's just too much going on. All right, guys. P40 time. Time for the Warhawk. All right, let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, well, there's not really a printable one. I actually made that one flyer, um, but uh, and I'm going to be putting that online. So you guys will see that online. We haven't circulated it yet, but you guys are seeing it for all the flyers here first, kind of, at least the Ceph one you're seeing. 
So, you know, please plan to come down. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be awesome. Both of these events will be cool. If you can't make one, make the other, because I'm basically bringing the same stuff to everything. So, all right, guys, here we go. Let's get this out. We'll get the wing out of here. You got to cut these things. Oh, it's all falling out. Uh, let's get the wing out of here. And uh, let's put, yeah, let's just put this down. What the heck? Let's get that out of the way. Let's put this down here. All right, we got our elevator halves. Really nice. I'll pull those out. Yeah, let me get those out there in a second. Let me pull these. These are all taped. They're all taped in. But again, I had this out for photographs, so I had to kind of get it out and put it back in. Just to show you how the setup in the box is. Uh, here, we'll get all this stuff out of here. Very nice, guys. I love this P40. This was one of my, one of my favorite P40s out there. Um, I flew it years ago. It was so nice to fly this. Now it's in a here. Now it's in a P40 scheme. So let's uh, let's take a look here. Um, there you go. Decals are already applied on this one. Um, I actually was recommending to Banana Hobby that what they probably should do is um, actually take the decals off this and supply them so everybody can put them on. Um, I had a uh, Eric to answer your question earlier. I had a little bit of peeling up of one or two of these decals, but. I just got them wet and kind of stuck them back down. That can happen in transport sometimes, so it's not that big of a deal. But for now, the ones that you guys will get, the decals are on this baby already. Check it out. I mean, they're already on there. Fit and finish is real nice. So, you know, awesome plane. Just really neat. Uh, all right, let me get this out of here. I got too much stuff going on. Put this, uh, put this over here. I'm probably going to, probably going to drown the foam boxes here today because I got all this stuff all over. Unfortunately, the trash guy came yesterday. So um, anyway, uh, all right, so let's get this stuff out of here. We'll take the wing off and we'll get into some detail on this. This is, this is a nice plane. Yeah, if you guys hadn't seen this before, this is a, this is a really sweet one. Um, here, I'll try to stand that. No, I'm not going to be able to stand that up. It's not going to happen. Let's put, uh, yeah, look at that wing. Look at the flaps. Flaps are cool on this. Very nice. So nice spring-loaded doors. Here we'll get in, get into all that here. All right, and then I'll I got my servo tester and all, so we can get this all plugged in and going. All right, let me get all the bags out of here, um, and we'll get this all together. So, all right, let's talk uh, some of these parts. I'll get the spinner out of the bag here. Actually, you know what? I'll leave the spinner in the bag for now because I'll, I'll, I'll probably misplace it if I if I do that right now. So we talked about the bomb. And uh, let's see what we got here. Yeah, nice. The decals are on it. Yeah. Um, OEO 1997. Thanks for coming. He says he's got to go back to work. So he's said everybody enjoy all. So thanks for coming. Appreciate that. All right, here we go, guys. Let's take a look at the first elevator. Yeah, these are nice. Yeah, they're not bent or nothing. Here, these are cool. Here, let's get in on this. Let me, uh, let me back this thing out. Let me just kind of minimize this real quick. Oh, actually, you know what? I can slide this over. Sorry, guys. I'm looking at my window here. I've got a halfway failing mouse pad <laughs> on my computer here. It's kind of semi-working. So anyway, here's her horizontal stabilizer and the two halves that will plug in together with the spar. So the wing spar, see they plug in. And in fact... If I had lost my wing spar, where did that go? Or horizontal spar? What on earth did I do with that? Ah, uh, shoot, I think I lost that already. It is gone! No! Uh, that might have fell someplace. Spar is gone. All right, let me see. Did anybody see where that went? I had it here a second ago and it fell off the table, I think, so. Uh, or I knocked it off or something. Let's see. Where did it go? All right, it's somewhere. <laughs> it disappeared on me. Let's see. I had it here a second ago. All right, well, anyway, I don't know where it went to. Oh, here it is. Here's the wing, the tail spar right here. We'll punch this out of the hole. There it is. Your, uh, your tail's going to go together just like this. That's going to go in together. These kind of butt up against each other, and this fits together. So let's zoom in on that and take a look. Real nice. Good quality. Fit and finish is very nice all the way around. Um, everything's nice and straight. It's got a nice straight tail to it. Uh, let's see if I can get that to focus. Yeah, there you go. And then it's already got the, the, the horn already molded in here, which is super, super nice. 
And then these are nice, the way that they put these tabs on here so you can have something to screw, you know, to the side of the fuselage. And then your joiner in the middle here. Now let me see if I can move my thing. I'm, I'm kind of cocked off at the center here. Let me get in the middle. There we go. And there's your, there's your centerpiece, and that all fits together. And I think there is a screw that's going to go through there. I, I don't remember 100%. I know there's the hole for it, but those, that lines up, and then you put, I think you put a screw through there. So, But anyway, you can see the quality, the fit, and the finish of the tail. They did a real nice job, nice foam hinge. They're all joined together real nice. So um, let me see if I can get that apart without breaking it. There we go. And you can see there's the, there's the hole. Let me put that there. You can see where the hole where they join together. So... Spar running through here, so real super nice. And again, one of my favorite planes, like I said, I flew this thing years ago, and this is just the newest version of it, you know, coming from, you know, Banana Hobby. So let's do this. Here's our wing. Let's take a look at that. How nice of a finish that is on there. Decals are on it already. Very nice. Look at the, uh, let's take a look here. Let's get zoomed in on there. You can see the, uh, finish on it right there. You can see the, the corrugations in the ailerons, decals applied. Let me, uh, let me back off just a little bit. I'm a little tight there. And then, uh, and then there's, your, there's your panel lines all the way through. Gun detail right there, really nice overall. And then there's your spring-loaded door. Your center section with all your wiring ready to go. So <coughs> that's all in there. So, very cool. Nice fit, nice finish. Um, your underside of your wing, let's look at the bottom. This is cool. So, let's get, uh, let me zoom in a little bit. We'll get some, we'll get some, get you guys some detail here. Let's go, let's start, start at this end here. Let me widen out just a little bit. Um, this is where your pedo tube's going to go. There's a little plastic uh, pedo that goes right there. Corrugations, I really like the horn on this. It has a really rugged horn right there that's already kind of glued in. It doesn't go through the top side, so it's pretty cool. Servos buried down in there, so real nice. And then our flaps. Check out the flaps on this baby. Those things will open up and close, and they have the corrugations in them, so very cool. Very nice all the way around. And uh, yeah, just digging this. And then there's your magnetic bomb drop. Right now it's set the other way, so it's actually, right now it's actually repelling. The magnet is actually sent set up right now to repel, to push that thing out. So when it rotates, there's a, there's a servo right in here, uh, right down there. And what that does is it rotates this magnetic kind of barrel, and it either attracts it or it, or it uh, in fact, I can probably show you guys that. Let's, let's see if I can wire that and make that work. Uh, here, let's plug this in. It's a pretty cool magnetic system that this thing uses. Um, here, let's plug this in. There we go. All right, let me see if I can find that thing. Let me back off here, guys, so you all can see. I'm going to grab the wire for that, which is a separate wire entirely. I'm going to connect that and see if we can get that to work. Yeah, there we go. Manual. Is that going to work? Let's see. Gonna work. It seems like it wants to work. Is it another connector issue? Here, let's see. Let's see if I can push that back down. Maybe that's what it is. Let's push this down. There we go. Let's try that. All right, yeah, probably won't work now. I think. Let's try that. Let's see if that's gonna work. Manual. Let's see if we can get that to hold in there. Not sure if we're going to get that to work. It should. Oh, I see what I did. That's what happened. I put it in the wrong slot. It's not the connector. It's the way I hooked it up. There we go. So it's got a, a magnetic. You'll see what here. Watch, watch this. We'll put this in here. Let's see. You can see right now it's repelling. Okay, it's actually repelling. But if I turn the servo, okay, it now attracts it. So this is being held in magnetically. But as soon as you turn that the other way or hit the switch, it repels. It turns the magnet the other way. So it's a real sharp, sharp mechanism. So the way that, that that's set up to work. Real nice bomb drop mechanism. So here you go. You've got this here. 
I hear the servo stalling a little, so I might adjust that or something. But anyway, you can see here's the bomb drop feature, and that's it. It works real nice. And you notice trying to put it back up in there, it'll stay there. Let's try, let's try it this way. Yeah, right now it's on there. There it drops. And if you try to put it in that way, it just it just repels it. It won't let it go back in until you have it actually turned. So, so there you go. One more time. There's your bomb drop. So it works works real nice. I'm going to leave it like that so it'll actually stay in there. And uh, we'll kind of get this going. So, But uh, you see your wiring for your wings. Let's get in on there. Um, everything is set up here pretty nice. It's all taped down here. So I got to just take your tape off right here and uh, get your connections. Everything's labeled nice. Get that off of there. And, uh, you know, you've got your uh, ailerons here. You've got your flaps here, all Y harnessed together nice. Your gear, all Y harnessed together nice. So those are the three. And then plus your one for your magnetic bomb drop. So that's your extra channel, your seventh, uh, seventh channel. So this is nice, folks. Really like this. Uh, the underside, you can get an idea of the quality, once again, of the tape. They did pretty good matching the tape. It's not until you get close. If you got some peeling away, you know, just push down on it. Um, from from shipping, sometimes it will it will peel up, and that's kind of normal. Um, if you have to, just stick a little foam tack under it and just tack it down; it'll it'll stay there. But uh, but super nice, nice retrack, spring loaded door for it to come down. This has very good gear, nice foam wheels on it, and everything. So uh, super nice, nice detail all the way around. It also has these little wood, these little pieces of wood in here just to kind of strengthen the front. I'm trying to remember exactly what that was for. That just I think that just toughens it up up front. Um, but that is it, guys. That's it for pretty much the wing, the, the horns, or the, uh, what is it, the, uh, the ailerons. Here, let me get another shot of that. You know, the ailerons have, have a spar running all the way through, which is nice. And, um, again, the corrugations, it's a foam hinge, but it's, it's well laminated. In fact, let me, let me zoom on that. I can see that a little better. You can see it's a pretty tough hinge in there. Very nice. Very nice movement in there. So, and we'll get this out flying for everybody. All right, let me back away here, and then let's get into this. The fuselage. See how this thing looks. That's it, P40N model, baby. There she goes. That is it. Look at the detail on this thing. Look how nice, look how nice those exhaust pipes are. I mean, that's pretty cool. Nice plastic molded part. Decals are applied pretty nice. Um, you can see right in there, the motor installed in there real well, the shark's mouth, lots of cooling for that speed controller, that speed controller's running right in there, so very cool, um, run around the bottom sign, this is a great fit and finish on this airplane, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that the wing connects to this with self-tapping screws, I usually like machine screws, but the self-tapping ones do work well on this. Um, this is where your fairing is going to get glued to, or your, your cow flat part, which I can take out of here right now. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, you have a cow flap piece that goes right kind of on here. Okay, so we'll glue that in place with some, probably with some foam tack, and that'll keep that, that on there. And I think there's a little side piece or something that goes in here. I'll, I'll check that out later. Uh, I don't remember exactly how that goes, but... Anyway, um, but there's your wing, there's your underside, your four screws that screw it into place. There you've got your, uh, your rudder and elevator, and I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, that I'm going to make some changes to that. Um, I believe that um, you have to go farther in on the hole. In fact, I'm going to go back and watch my old video of this, um, because I think I went into like the, the second hole from the middle or something on, on both of those, or at least on the elevator. So we'll talk about that again during the flight demo. That, that was kind of critical because it had a lot of throw in it. And if you didn't take that throw out, the thing was like all over the place. But it's great flying airplane once you get it set up right or once you get the hole right. That's all. It's just a matter of getting the hole right. Um, really sharp cooling holes in the back. They have, um, they really made like two little micro holes back here back there that uh, kind of angle pretty steeply to get the air out uh, out of the fuselage. And then, um, you know, just looking at the back of this thing, decals applied, rudders hinged nice. You know, it's got a good good foam hinge in there, it looks like. I don't know if that's backed up with anything or not, but 
It looks like it's pretty tough. Ball links all the way around. You can see how nice the balls are on this. Um, a lot of the Banana Hobby planes, not all, but a lot of them are coming with these really nice ball links on there. Nice plastic horns and everything, so very cool. Very cool how that is. I'm showing a little lag, so if you guys are getting any lag, let me know. This is, again, the N model P40, which is why this canopy is the way it is. You can tell the N model with this, this kind of sharp angle up, and then this thing here in the back, that back deck in there. So there's uh, no pilot in there, but you can see the, uh, the decals applied there. You can see the uh, instrument panel. And um, yeah, it looks like he's got a gun sight in there. You know, pilot's got a gun sight in there. Let's see if we can see in there. Yeah, there it is. So he's got a pretty neat instrument panel there. Not too bad. And uh, you can stick a pilot in there, hopefully from underneath. Actually, that's going to be hard to get to if you want to put a pilot in there now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, they should have put a pile in there, but that's okay. Finish is real nice on this thing. Nice cowling. And then here's where your battery's going. There's actually an antenna, too, that sticks in here, I believe. But here's your battery compartment. It's magnetic. Opens up like that. Battery goes fully forward. 4S2200 pack all the way up front. It's got a strap, so it's, it's ready for some maneuvering here, as you can see. So all the connectors are in there, kind of ready to go. So very, very cool. So uh anyway questions guys yeah the bomb drop is really cool it's very nice uh guniac 33 is here yes sir already on the way what's he saying you'll have uh tracking later uh, what was he saying is something coming uh guniac's in the house i just noticed i didn't really look until just now sorry about that ray is here guys you guys can thank ray for uh for seth and joan all oh i forgot to mention everybody too um uh, once again Ray gave us two afterburners for the giveaway, for, for this giveaway that expires the, the, at the end of the month, last day of the month. So if you guys haven't gone to my website, uh, you know, go to it. Um, Ray supplied that for everybody. So let me, uh, let me open up the website thing. I know it's not doing it. Why not? Here, hang on a sec. Let me go to this. Let me go to, oh, database error. What does that mean? That don't make no sense. How can we have a database error? What is that? I was going to say, go to my website. Hey, guys, go to my website and see if you're having a problem getting to my website because it's not letting me get to my website, rcinformer.com, because that's where you register to, uh, to win Ray's Afterburner. Something, something, something's not cool with that. Let's see. Uh, the other sites are working, so I think we're okay there. Let me minimize. Yeah, well, go to my website when it's working. I don't know what, what happened. It says there's an error there or something. So, all right, I'll have to check that out. But anyway, Ray gave us a couple of afterburners for the giveaway for, uh, for the end of the month. So if you haven't, go to my website, click on it, and get in there. I'll try it here in a few minutes um, and see if I can figure out why it's not getting on. Um, in fact, if you guys want, go to my website, rcinformer.com, and see if you can get there. Let me know if you can't, because if you can't, I'm gonna have to fix something there, because something's, uh, something's, something's messed up. Something's not where it ought to be. Uh, and that's, you know, that's never cool. So let me see. Uh, yeah, nice detail on this thing. King Quarantine keeps saying booty, 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 booty. Ray, that's so cool. Yeah, Ray gave us two burners, one international giveaway, one domestic. It's, it's finished at the end of this month. So if you go to rcinformer.com, right below the main picture, which I was going to show you, but it's not working, um, it says enter to win. So you guys can go there, enter all your information, and somebody from international is going to get one from my international viewers, and somebody else um, from the domestic side is going to get it. So we got two giveaways for that for everybody that watches my channel. So, so definitely check it out, guys. And then Ray's given us two burners per event for uh, the Ceph event, okay, uh, and for the Pilot Ryan event that's going on um, on these dates. So uh, again, guys, check both of these out. We're going to have burner giveaways. Ray's giving us basically six, two for now, two for each of those events. So yeah, Ray's, uh, Ray's stepping up and uh, kind of giving away to everybody, which is nice. Hey, Rich, just turned in, been thinking about purchasing one of these from Banana Hobbies. What's your opinion of the 1100 millimeter Warbird? Have you flown it? I have not flown this exact one. But I flew the, the older Durafly, which is basically the same model, and, um, and uh, it's awesome. And in fact, if you guys want to see it fly, 
Uh, what you can do is you can go to, uh, let me do DuraFly. E40. There we go. Yay. Oh my God, look at this. All right, guys, here we go. Let me get rid of that thing. And let's go here. Let's do this. The first video, if you guys do a search for the Durafly P40 RC Informer, first video you're going to see that's going to come up is, uh, is my video on it. So, you know, check it out. It flies fantastic. This is just the Banana Hobby version with the decals already on it. I got the volume off, I hope, here, guys. So, beautiful model. You can see I'm flying it nice and low here, dropping a bomb. Boom, there you go. It flies beautifully. This one you had to put the decals on. The new one here you don't. It just comes as a, as a flying tiger version of it here. So um, anyway, um, oh, tape sticking to it. No, I right, didn't take the paint off. So, but uh, I think probably one of the coolest parts of this video, I'm doing a touch and go. One of the cooler parts of this video is at the very end. And I talk about battery placement. I talk about rods, horns, and linkages, as you can see here everywhere. See, here's what I was talking about. The elevator goes on the second hole. That's where you get the best, you know, so I, you gotta take the horn off and just you know, put it in the right hole. That's all there is to it. Um, and then here, this was one of the coolest, I thought, parts of the video here. Um, is that gonna load up? Let's see. Here, let's see, let me see if I can maximize this. Oh, something crashed. Some sound in there. Yeah, I thought this was the part of the video. I actually made, I screwed up the landing if you guys can see here. Uh, Yeah, this was a cool. I'm gonna go back to it again. And show it to y'all. Airplane. I'll go ahead and put it down here. Yeah, there it was uh, right real there. Same nice plane as you can see. Coming from, nice uh, fit and again, finish. Durf probably one of the best and, uh, hobby king. I've seen on a model. Real Very impressed nice. with it. If you're looking for a pretty and, high um, performance, um, but relatively easy to fly. But this is one of the cool things I did with the plane. Uh, is definitely the way to go. You can see here, I did kind of a crappy landing here at the end. Thanks for checking out RC and This is actually fun to watch. See you next time. I did kind of a crappy landing. I nosed it over, but the plane settled right back down again. It's pretty durable. I just powered up and flipped right off. See how nice that is. You guys might have a little move. There we go. I didn't harm it or anything. So, yeah, super model, guys. So, uh, real fast here. Lock that in so it's not making any noise. All right, so yeah, that's it in action. And I'm going to get a full video of this out, too, for everybody to see. So, you know, never fear. We'll have this out. I love P40 Warhawks. They're just so nice. So, uh, anyway, so that's that. And then here, we've got some hardware here. We've got the propeller blades. Uh, those just come right out and fit right in. You can see those come out, the three blades. Here's your spinner. Spinner's a real nice fit. This has a kind of a different way that this connects which I th always thought was pretty neat. Instead of a hex drive, it has a, like sort of a, a square motor drive kind of thing. I don't know what else to call it, but it's form fitted. Uh, the hub, uh, the prop is specific to this prop drive. So it is unique to it. So you see that this has a, see this has sort of a, a square adapter and so does the spinner, see that? So it fits right in like a glove. It locks in place. And you have a pretty nice, let me see if I can back this off. And you have a pretty nice gap. Of course, I gotta, I gotta tighten this to get it to fit. It's kind of kind of cumbersome here, but um, pretty nice fit all the way around. And it's a nice positive lock. It's not gonna slide. So, so very, very nice with that. Let me put this, let me kind of slide these out of the way here, guys. And, uh, and then we got all these other parts. Let me pull these out. We'll talk about some of these. Um, this is nice. They give you an adapter, which is cool. Um, a Deans to uh, XC60. Um, here's your here's your aileron rods and ball links. Very nice hardware. This is some of the best hardware around. 
These are Allen head screws, two millimeter, with lock nuts, so nylon lock nuts. Um, this is, I think, the spinner, spinner screw, if I'm not mistaken, and the screws to put the spinner in place. And then here's some of your antennas right here. There's three antennas. The detail on this is really nice. This is a very detailed model. Uh, hey, let me back this off. There's your pitot tube and two antennas there. One goes up front. One might be actually be a gun sight. I'm not sure, but, um, but you can see the antennas there, three of them, the little one. And then a little bit of, uh, oh, I just dropped it. They give you an Allen wrench too, so that's good. You have your own, you got an Allen wrench. Uh, a little bit of Velcro. And then here's your rods, your flap rods right here. And, uh, and then here's your rudder uh, and elevator um, screws. So you've got, you've got the screws to screw the, the elevator in place. So that's it, guys. This is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And uh, actually, we're going to get to it. Let me uh, let me grab my um, let me grab a stand here. Um, in fact, I might grab myself. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use I'm going to try this cruising stand again. It worked well before. Actually, it might really work for this because this is a flat, it's a low riding airplane. Let's see. We'll get that on there. Yep. There we go. Um, oh, and this has one of the nicest. I want to show you guys this. A lot of these planes coming from Banana Hobby have this really nice tailwheel deal here where yeah, I'll zoom right in on that so everybody can see that. The tailwheel is driven by this really nice aluminum horn in there that's super adjustable. It's got an easy connector up top. It's not driven by a separate servo. It's still driven by the rudder servo, and it's kind of efficient that way. Um, but you can adjust it big time, really nice with a lock nut on the bottom of it. So, Real nice feature, very high quality feature. Um, you've also got an E-ring here, a little foam tack on that E-ring. I'll put that on there a little later. So uh, anyway, here we go. Let's back out here. Let's get this on here. Very nice, very nice. All right, there we go. And let's get this together. Let's see how this goes, goes in. Let me uh, pull up my chat log here, guys, and see, what, uh, see if people are talking to me here. Let's see. Let's open that up. There we go. All right, let's see what we got. Guniac, I have flown a couple of these birds. They fly great, yep. Ball link rule, Miller RC says. I really enjoy FMS P40B. This one looks nice too. Yeah, P40B is a nice plane. That, uh, that FMS plane is pretty awesome. Uh, let's see, left wing insignia, top right wing insignia. That's from Curtis Curtis. Adam Hampton, yeah, oh yeah, oh, it's Adam, shoot, yeah. Yeah, Adam and I have had many discussions. Adam's filmed for me a little bit. Hey, Adam, are you going to, uh, you going to make it to Ceph, you think, this year? You going to get there? Uh, that'd be cool if you came. Uh, here, let's see. So here's how this is going to go on. Uh, uh, Guniac says, got to get going, but this is good stuff. Yeah, that's fine. No, wait, no, wait. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is dragging on because I'm doing two airplanes here, three airplanes here today. All right, guys, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to get this, this part together, see if we can get this uh, kind of done. Let's zoom in on this. There we go. Let's get this tail piece on here. So with, with this, uh, with, the, with your, uh, with your um, uh, spar inserted in there, we're just going to take this and just put it right across here. This should go in nice. I have not done a dry fitting of this, this on this model yet, so we're going to see how that goes in. That seems to fit in there pretty decently. And these are the things that stop it. These right here. Those plug right in, right there and right there. So, and then I'll get the other side in here as well. I'll, put, I'll line that up on the thing and just kind of slot the spar and just kind of slide it in there. And I'm going to wiggle it a little bit. Let me put the plane on its side. I'm going to wiggle this a little bit and get it, get it all plugged in there. All right, make sure the centers, these all fit together nice. They're going together well. Shoot, I don't even know if you could put that screw in there to, to join those two. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you can even get in there. Can you get in there? Oh, yeah, you can, through the underside. Yeah, we'll talk about that. So that goes on there like that. And then I'm going to grab the elevator screws, and we'll put those on. So you guys, I think, have a pretty clear shot of that right there. In fact, you know what? I'll invert the plane. Let's do that. Heck, that's even better, isn't it? All right, so let me find the screws. I'm going to look right here. Those say elevator and rudder. 
So I'll grab those screws and we'll do the elevators. There's probably four that are identical. There they are. Screwdriver right in here. Let's see, let's put that in place, pop that in there. And I will start by getting this one in there. There we go, that's in place already. Actually, my bigger screwdriver might be good for this. There we go, let's put that in place right there. And that is that, that's gonna go in nice. Very cool, very nice. Yep, there we go. Put this one in there. Get it tight. There we go, let's see, got two more. Let's lock this, lock this other side in. I'll get these on the underside. Let's flip this around. Let's try to put that in place. There we go. We'll lock that one in first. Get the second one. Let me push that in place. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. That should fit in there. Tighten that up. Yep, yeah, very good. Going in nice. Yep, yeah, let's lock it in. All right, very good. Those are in place. And I think there's a single screw that's supposed to join the two of these together. Yeah, there it is. So I think that's what this is for. There is a hole. I'm going to try and show you guys. I think I can. Yep, yeah, there it is. Um, no, you're not going to see that. <laughs> All right. Here's the hole. I'll point it out to you all right here. See right there? That's what joins the two of these things together, right there, that hole. But it's not, it's actually not lined up. You can now tell, I can tell by looking at that, it's not lined up. So let's do this. Let me pop, see if I can get these to stick in together. No, they're not going in. Let me undo this. I'll back one of these out and see why it's not fitting together. See what's going down with that. Pull this back off. Sometimes you gotta unfit what you just fit. Let's see here. Da -da -da -da. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got going on here. Nope, that's not coming out. Nope, I don't want to tear the hinge either. Here, let's do this. Let's roll it around. Take this side off here. They want to go together there. Let's see what's happening. Got to be careful because you can tear hinges doing this, and I, I might have just kind of torn one a little bit, but that, that kind of happens. Yep, yeah, there you go. Now it's coming off. Here's my spar. The tail exploded. All right, let's see what we got. Let me back away here. For some reason, something wasn't going in all the way. I'm not sure why exactly. Maybe, you know what? It might just be some paint. Here, let's see. You know what? It might just be the scuff. You just have to scuff it a little bit. Yeah, uh, you know what? That probably is what it is. Sometimes that can happen with these things. Let me take... Uh, I'm going to sand the end of this just a little bit. So all I'm doing is just sanding a little of that plastic away. It might just be a little bit of a tight fit. That's all. Sometimes that happens. And we might need a hobby knife to scrape some of this away. Let's see. Something's stopping those two from going in there. Ah, there we go. That's all it was. It was just, just a little bit tight. So, and I'll show you guys here what I did. Scraping away, scraping away. You don't want to make this too loose or anything. But something was just tight in there. So you can see here, I'll give you guys a close up. What can happen is, is these two pieces going together right here. They fit together. They were just getting stuck. They weren't going in all the way. So with a little bit of, little bit of scraping on here, right here, Okay, you get them to fit together. So you can see now the holes line up. That's how it's supposed to go on the airplane. So you, you put a screw 
right through that hole once they're together. So we'll reassemble that and uh, let's get this thing on there. Put this back in place, pop this back in. Let's see here. And we'll get this. Uh oh, almost dropped. Oh. <laughs> Had a little, little gravity occur there. That's all right, that happens sometimes. Let's see, we'll get this in place. Get that locked in. Let's see, did I ding? Yeah, I dinged my canopy a little, or my uh, fairing a little bit. That's, that's all right. That happens sometimes. All right, let's see. Let's get this on. And let's see if the holes are going to line up. All right, let's see if we can get those to, get those to go in there. All right, looks like they are lining up now. Okay, very good. They are lined up. So what we'll do is we'll get these screws back in place. Let me roll this around again. Let's see here. We'll get... Uh, Get these in place, put the screws back in. Yep, we'll get those to bite. Get this one to bite too. All right, that's in there. We'll get these two here. Yeah, not bad. All right, we'll get this one in here. Let's see, and then this one in here. All right, we'll get this in place. And that is that. And then we can take this hole, like we talked about, this one that lines up. Hopefully without dropping the airplane off the table again. Zoom in there. See if we could show that this hole right down there. That will join the two halves together. So I'm going to use a different screwdriver for that. And that, that should fit right in here. It's at a little of a diagonal, but that's okay. This, this should bring those two halves together. There we go. Perfect. So that's going in there, and that will ensure that those two are stuck together, which is nice. So, um, and that is it, I think, folks. I think we got it all, got it all on there. That's the tail. And then the last step, really, to this part here, is I'm going to move this this way, and then I'm going to put something a counterweight on this stand because the thing's going to fly away here on me. Now all we got to do is get the ball length on, and that just will fit right onto here, as you can see. So we're just going to line that up. Let's see if I can even get tighter on that for everybody. Uh, here, let's raise up a little bit. There we go. And then here's where we're going to take... I'm only going to do this on probably one ball link. I'm not going to do all the ball links today. We'll talk about the rest of this later as I fly the plane, but this is just so everybody can see pretty much how this is going to go together. You see just a ball link ball goes through there. And I will grab There we go. Let's do this. I'm going to grab underneath it. Actually, you know what? I'm going to need pliers for this. I'm going to take a pair of pliers and a socket a driver which is, um, it's totally, oh, I forgot where I put those drivers. They're in my uh, radio case. Let me grab a driver. Not that one. Okay. Take a two millimeter from the top, or sorry, a millimeter and a half from the top. And then with a pair of pliers underneath, I'm going to put the nut, just hold that underneath. right here. Get that to thread. And that is it. Very nice ball link. I like this. Very good construction. I don't remember the original one of these having, having ball links. In fact, I might even put that ball link on the inner side because that rod... No, no, that works okay. That works good. Actually, you know, while we're here, 
I might as well just do the other one too. Here, let's do if I can if I can show that. Uh, let me see if I can come up just a little bit. There we go. Um, it's not quite centered, guys, but I'm going to go with this as is. So here we go. I'm going to put this on here. My mill and a half. Man, these are some nice linkages. I like these things. Put that through there. Does that look good on top or bottom? Actually, that is fine on the bottom. That actually probably looks where it should be. All right, we're going to do the same thing we just did. And uh, that's your rudder connection there. So we'll put, uh, put a millimeter and a half socket on there. Locking, uh, locking nut there. Sorry about that. It's not quite centered, folks, but there we go. I'll get a little better in there. And that's it. Great quality hardware on this thing. You can't beat this. How nice that is. There we go. Don't over tighten it because you crack the plastic. But, uh, and that's pretty much it, guys, for your, for your tail, you know, on this thing, how this goes together. You can see the quality of this thing. Um, the rudder's not going to be deflected straight, but there, you can see how nice the tail is on this thing. How nice those, uh, those connectors, those ball links are, how they all go on there well. You've got your, um, your screws that screwed that in there. You've got your adjustable tail wheel, and just very, very nice. Look at that. So you got your uh, your tail ball link on there, your screws holding that thing in place. So very, very nice tail assembly, and that's, you know, that's that's pretty much it, folks, for that. And then the wing, wing's very simple. Um, let's get these down here. Let's get the wing on there. I'm going to kind of do this this way, I think. I think we've got, yeah, we're good there. I think we're good. Let's see if I can get this towards, yeah. Let's move this way a little bit. I have my battery on there for, for ballast. And there we go. Wings about in the center. Yeah, let's go this way with it. No, I'll put this here and I'll go this way. There we go. So we'll zoom in. And there we go. You guys can see that. Our wing's going to go on pretty easily here. All these wires, we want them to go through one of these front holes here. So as best we can. So I'm going to go through as far front of a hole as I can. And someone else is calling me. Who's calling me from Texas? Let's see. Put this through here. Probably a guy wanting to sell me some solar. Yeah, let's see. Let's get this in place. He's in here. There we go. Feeding those wires through. I get at least a solar, several solar calls per week. People trying to sell me solar. So, and that is that. Let's see. It's a bunch of wires going through that one holder. <laughs> yeah, it'll all go in there pretty nice. All right. Let's see. Okay, what I'm going to do for just a second, because there's so many wires going through there, what I'm going to do is kind of just hold it there. Go top side, pop this off, and reach in and grab some of these wires and sort of pull them through, because there, there's just so many of them, it's kind of ridiculous. And I think a lot of them just get stuck in there. There's just too many. Let's pull these through here. See what else is sticking. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I think that might be that might be it. Uh, now there's one wire that's kind of grabbing there. It's one of these. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to look at it through the top and see where it is and why it's sticking to something. And that's it. The baby's in place. Very good. All right, let's see what we got with that. So that's staying on. Let me put the cover back on for a second. We'll now flip it again. And we'll get our screws on. There we go. All right, let's see what we got. We will grab our long screws. There's four of them here. Uh, they look like they're almost the same length. Let's see. 
These are wing screws, self-tapping. Let's get into these. There they are. Looks like two are, yeah, it looks like there's two long and two short. So let's see, I can show you that. Too long, too short. So I'm thinking the long ones are going up front, but I am not 100%. Let's see, that, that bottoms out there. This one bottoms out there. Yeah, I think the I think the big ones go up front. Yeah, that's probably what it is. All right, so we'll tighten these down. You guys will be able to see this. Back off a little bit. There we go. And yeah, that goes in nice. I'm not going to tighten those too much because I'm going to go in there and change those servo uh, servo uh, horns later. And we'll talk about that in the flight demo for sure. And the rear ones, I need a different screwdriver because those are actually a smaller, smaller head screw, believe it or not. Um, let's see. Oh, someone's knocking on the door. I gotta go get that. You get in? Chloe, Connor? All right, somebody just came in. All right, I lost that screw in there. Let me get a magnet. The screw got stuck there. Let's see. Let's take a magnet here. Who's home? Who? Oh, they're all home. Okay, good. Everybody just got home downstairs. I'm hearing doors opening and stuff. All right, there we go. So that's it for the wing, folks. That's it in place. And uh, what I'm going to do here, I think, is I'll probably uh, I'll probably put one aileron on just to show everybody how that goes on. I think it's pretty simple. Ailerons, flaps, they all go on really the same way. Um, I'll grab the uh, aileron bag. Let's see here. The aileron bag. Yeah, here it is. There's the ailerons. Again, nice hardware. Pretty cool overall. I'll back off just a little bit here. We'll get up to the, show everybody the aileron in there. And uh, let's get that uh, focused on that. There we go. Let me lower this. Nope, that's as low as it's gonna go. All right, so here we go. Pull this open. These are nice lock nuts. This is great the way that this thing the way they set this up. And I am not gonna go too crazy with the holes on this thing. I'm just gonna put it on the outer hole for now, and we'll talk about that again during the flight. So, um, and then we'll line those up where they go. I'll talk about that again. That's all flying stuff, because I'll set the ball lengths where they go. We'll talk about that then, and exactly what hole they're going in. Here, they're always gonna go on the outer, uh, or the only, actually there's only one hole, so that's how that's gonna work. Actually, that's a very good fit in there. So I'll stick this thing right in here. Again, millimeter and a half, metric. I just happen to have my Tamiya wrench. That is a perfect fit. And let's get that going in there, so. And that's it, guys. That's where we're at. That's, uh, that's in place, and that's how nice, uh, how nice the ball links are on this thing. Very, very cool. Again, we'll talk about the horn holes later. Uh, but that is it. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Spinner's a piece of cake to get together. Prop and spinner. We'll show you that real fast because that's the last real part of getting together here. Put this over here. We'll get that in the bank. And all you have to do with the props is snap these things in place. I'll zoom these in. And you can see you just push these down into position. They kind of kind of lock in there pretty tight. So um, with all three of these disappeared on me, here they are. We'll get the next one in. You can see they have these little, little alignment marks. Two of them on top, two of them on the bottom. I think you guys can see that. And then I just press that in place and that's it. So I'll put the last one on, and that's it. They fit right in there, and then one screw goes in the middle 
of each one. So what I'm going to do though is I'm going to put this on my table right like this and I'm going to use something kind of blunt to sort of push down something hard to make sure they're seated. Yeah, that one wasn't seated all the way. And then once they're all the way down there, you can take the three supplied screws, which are just these little things, they're really tiny. Uh, and then they just, each one of them goes in there. See that right there? That's all it is, it's just three little screws. So um, I'll put one of those in each hole here. I'm gonna drop these in. And it's a pretty good, pretty good bond on there. Pretty good, pretty tight tap in there. So I'll start that one. Yeah, let's just take this one and put that one back in the hole. All right, I'll let you guys get a close up on that. There you go. See how simple that is. So just take that and tighten those up. Don't over tighten them because yeah, you can strip this plastic. Um, yes, I have done it before. <laughs> so here we go, we'll get that in place. Just make sure it's just kind of snug. And um, I'll get that last one on there, sorry about that. I don't think I took that away from the camera. Yeah, don't over tighten. And that's it, you got your three, three on there. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. Just like we showed before, this is gonna go right on there. this around for everybody. There we go. Like that. And this is going to fit on. Let me zoom in. You all will be able to see this. That's a cool looking plane. That's very, very cool. But you can see here your, your prop drive kind of that we talked about and how that fits right on, kind of square looking. All right. Let me get that right on play in place. Lock that in. And then we'll stick our washer over it. Put this on there. And let's see. My adjustable wrench. Yeah, the individual prop blades are really nice. Yeah, I, I like the way they are. It's always been kind of a nice fit here. So, and that's it. I'll just kind of loosely tighten it. And then this is going to go right on. It's a very nice spinner, very nice attachment. This is going to go right in all the way through. And then we'll tighten that up. And that is it. P40, baby. All right, there we go. And we'll back out and then we can see how absolutely cool this plane is. Yeah, man. Warhawk. So, and there's some other details here. Here's the other thing. I'm not going to glue this on just yet. Here, let me back this off. Yeah, telephoto, let's get in on that. There's a, let's see here, there is a, let's see what we got. There's a little antenna that goes right here. There's a bunch of little antenna details on this thing. Yeah, where is it? Here we go. Let's see. There's a little one, and I'll glue these in later. I'm just going to kind of stick them in there for now. There's um, a little one that goes right here. Put that in its place. And then there's one, I think, in the back here. It's just gonna go kind of right here. It's gonna sit right in there. I think that's how that goes in. Yeah. And then there's a wingtip one that will glue right there. I just need a little foam tack to keep that in place. It should kind of stick there for now. But you can see it's got some, it's got some good scale details on there. And then, of course, we've got the, the lower chin cowl flap that I will glue on later. And that's kind of gives it that iconic, you know, P40 cowl flap right there. So that's going to glue in place. There's actually these two little plastic pieces that I think go in there as well. They just kind of go under there. I just don't remember exactly how they fit. So I will mess with that later. But that's really... That's really kind of it. So, you know, for the basic assembly, that's, that's what you got, guys. That's, that's how easy that thing goes in there. And in fact, you know what, I'm gonna flip this around for one second. 
And the next thing we're going to do, I think, here is get the landing gear down so everybody can sort of see that. I'm going to look really fast. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know how these go on there. That's right. There's a little bit that you glue on there. Yeah, that's right. There's these two kind of box shape little things. Here you go. This is what they look like. Kind of here. That's what they are. And then that fits right down in here. Okay, those fit into place. And then this goes, I think, I think this goes right. Actually, I'm not sure why those, why would you even have that? I'm trying to remember when I built this a long time ago. Yeah, I think they just go, yeah, that's right. They fit in like that. So that'll give you an idea of where those go, what those look like. There's your cow flap with those two little plastic pieces right there. You can kind of see right there on the side how those fit in. This just comes right off. Those two pieces glue in. This just goes right kind of next to it. So I'll glue those into place later and get them in there for now. I'll just kind of leave it uh, sort of as is. They may pop off here or whatever, but uh, but that's, that is it, folks. The detail on this is really awesome. Very, very cool plane. Um, and what I'm going to do, there's no lights on this model, so what I'll do is I'm just going to extend... Um, I'm going to extend the landing gear so we can check that out. Landing gear always works really well on this thing. Let's see how it, uh, how it comes down now. Let's see if we can get that in place. Landing gear. There's one wire for the landing gear. There's only two of them, so that's a good deal. All right, let's see if we can get that coming down. All right, we'll point this forward. Oh, no, not the rough ball. All right. Put this right down there, and let's see if we can get that to... And that is it. This, this always had nice landing gear. Here, check this, uh, check this out. This is cool stuff. It always had a very nice set of landing gear, this thing. Um, there's no suspension. There's no compression in it. But they always had a very nice forward rake. So it wouldn't really... This thing really wouldn't tip over, you know, hardly at all. But, but there's your gear. And there's the operation of it. Very smooth, very nice. Works perfectly out of the box. Can't go wrong. These are spring-loaded doors. So they spring load, open and close nicely. I remember never really having any problem with these gear. Even when I flipped it up on the nose in the video, um, they went right back, uh, right back up and right back down again. None of them bent or anything. So very, very nice, very nice plastic flaps. And, uh, and that's it, guys. That is, that is it for the P40 um, at Banana Hobby. Real nice. I'll stick the bomb back on the bottom. We'll back off on the zoom. And there we go. That is it. Let me get the stand out of here because we don't need that anymore. Get that out of the way. We'll take, uh, put this down. Put this on its wheels. And uh, I'll get the rest of the rods, horns, linkages on there. I'll get the battery all the way forward. Next chance I get. I'll unplug this because we don't need that on anymore. And that is it. What a beauty. Look at this thing. Check this out. How nice that thing is. Very, very cool. In fact, I'm going to take the bomb off because it's easier for me to move it around without the bomb on it. But check that out. Super nice model coming from Banana Hobby. Um, uh, lots of detail on it. Very easy to assemble, folks. Um, just check it out, you know, in the description below. Like I said, if you guys do want to get one of these, just use my link below. That supports us. It doesn't cost you guys any more to do that. And, okay, there's my cow flap coming off. I'm just going to take that off. I'll glue it on with some foam tack a little later. But just beautiful model. Really, really nice. Um, again, if you guys want to check this out, all you have to do at Banana Hobby is just go there. Go to... Uh, electric aircraft, Warbird, militaries, and it's right on the front page. So, and that's that's exactly where you can where you can see this thing is it's right on the front page there. Um, there is a ARF, there's a kit and an RTF. Um, you know, I recommend always the uh, the uh, the ARF because it just all you got to do is put a receiver and battery in it, like this one is, because that's what this is, um, and then you go with it. So, but super cool, folks. Let me uh, let me cancel that out, close that up. Let me make this large again. Go back to my live stream. 
All right, guys, open it up. Questions? Anybody got anything on this? Just a super nice, super nice bird. Really like this thing. Very, very cool. I'm dying to fly it again. I remember flying in the past. It was always, always very awesome to fly. So let's see. Uh, let's see, what do we got? King Quarantine, have a T28 Trojan, getting a Durafly Vampire, Canadian Edition, 70, uh, 70 millimeter jet. Let's see, oh, the Aggressor. Oh, is, is it the Aggressor? If that's the case, I've changed my mind. Thanks, but no thanks. All right, well, <laughs> okay, Flanker Tanker's not into the Aggressor. I don't understand why no, no pilot in this P-40. Yeah, they probably should have put one in there. Um, I don't even know if the original one had it or not, but... Uh, can the canopy be removed so we can add one? Actually, no, it can't. You have to go in through the underside, I guess. You'd, you'd have to peel that away to get in there. Yeah, it's not, it's not the best for getting a pilot in there, um, but you can peel this away and then just put one in there and just glue it back on. So, But uh, King Quarantine says he thinks not. Split flaps are very nice on this. Nice size, flanker tanker, yeah. 1100 millimeter, 4S. It's a monster. It's a really nice, fast little airplane. Slows down well, lands very well, has a nice forward rake on the landing gear, tends to not nose over, and uh, just very cool. Uh, awesome, guys. Very nice. Let's see. Mine was a Durafly Vampire. Let's see. Rich, what kind of hinge system is on this model? Well, you know, the ailerons and the elevator and the rudder, they are all foam hinges. If there's anything backing them, I really can't see them in there. So I don't think there's really anything else, but they are laminated. They're very tough. I don't see, I don't see anything coming apart on them. So they seem real nice. So, um, but yeah, they're foam style hinges. The flaps actually are um, actually a plastic hinge though. They're hinged at three points. Um, you can actually see right here, right in there. Let's see if I can show you. You can see the three hinges there. And then when I close it up, you can see the three underneath. One's right here, one's here, and then one's right here. So, but those are actually plastic, real, very nice flaps on this thing. Always had very nice, very nice plastic flaps with sort of the simulated. Actually, it is a real corrugation. It's just a plastic one. So, a very, very nice flap system on the model. So, very cool. Uh, but yeah, good looking bird. Nice paint job. Nice fit and finish. If I can put it together on a live show without any problem. It assembles well, so, you know, not a, not a big deal. Very, very nice. All right, guys, let's see. What battery does it use, save the humans? Um, it uses a, um, um, uh, a three or a four cell, preferably four. Four cell 2200 pack fits in there really nice all the way forward. I will talk about there during the flight demo because I don't kind of want to go into it now. Um, uh, I'll discuss that when I fly it because then I can really put it all together. But um, it'll use a 3 or 4S, but on 4S is where you where it's at. 4S, 2200, all the way up front. It's, it's, it's pretty awesome. So, um, all right, Jake, get out of here. My cat's bothering me. All right, guys, um, that is it for this. I think we're really up to one last uh, sort of topic that I kind of promoted there, and that was talking about the Rafal. Is everybody ready to talk about Rafal? Here, let's go. Let me get this thing. Let me go park this. Park the P-40. Again, check it out at Banana Hobby. So uh, let me put this down real fast. I'm gonna put this over here. Let me walk over here. Sorry, guys. All right, let's see. We'll put that down. And let's see. Let's talk about the Rafal. All right, here we go topic of conversation. All right, I'm expecting 100 viewers now to jump on suddenly. Yeah, we'll talk about this just a little bit because there's been discussion about it. This thing flies nice. Beautifully built airplane. Probably about as perfect as an EDF can get. I mean, as far as just fit and finish and it's just it's good looking. Little flaws with it, but nothing major. I mean, it's very, very nice. Got it assembled so well. Probably one of the sharpest looking things out there. So, um, all right, guys. Let's talk about this just a little bit and then we will move on. Uh, let's see here. Anybody got questions about anything up until now? 
Rich needs a bigger hanger, yeah. Little to no glue and just screwing. Yep, that's right. That's flanker tanker talking. All right, guys. I think I'm going to plug, plug this in. Get my radio out. Here we go. GX9, baby. All right. Safety's on. Rafal's loaded. Let's go with this. Actually, I'm going to put in, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a 4,000 is what I'm going to do. Just to, just to get it balanced up. This is not real critical right now, but. All right, let's get all of this stuff as far in there as I can go. All right, landing gear's down. Oilers deployed or not deployed. Now that's the, there we go. All right, let's get this plugged in. All right. Here we go. All right, that is that. Let me get everything going. All right, here we go. Put this down. Rough fall, baby. French built so. All right, here we go. Let's talk. Let's talk about this. All right, let's see. Well, let's go this way a little bit. Uh, that's pretty good. Crank the motor. Here, let's see. All right, let's turn it back off. Okay, what were we talking about? Ailerons and elevators and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Are all these planes programmed to the latest Spectrum radios? Which one? Damn, Rich, you're pulling a Kenny on us. What's a Kenny? What's Kenny doing? Yeah, why does the Rafal have flaps? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have flaps. That's kind of the point of this kind of what I was going to talk about. A lot of people are having some confusion with this. The wire is wired flap when you plug it into the flap channel, but it really is not a flap. And there's been a lot of discussion the last couple of days because people are getting these airplanes delivered. Um, it's really not a flap. It's a, it's a, it's a crow type break is what it is. So, um, what, what it is, is, um, let me get, um, yeah, let's switch to that. Picture on. There we go. What it is, is it's a crow type break. So as you guys are looking at this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this up and I'm gonna try to center this as best as I can on the camera. So obviously when you pitch, you, know, you got your elevators working with your canards. This is all pre-programmed. This is the beauty about this thing is you don't have to do any programming to this, this thing. You plug in an aileron and you plug in an elevator and your canards, elevators, ailerons are already pre-programmed. You don't have to do anything to it. That's what's nice about this FMS plane. So, got your elevator, got your aileron control, that's it. And then you have your crow brake function, okay, which is what this is. So, um, it doesn't really provide much as far the way a flaps goes. It just slows the airplane down. That's really all it's meant for. It's a crow brake. Um, it's just that from the factory, FMS doesn't have a label for their servo leads that says, Pro break. So they just stuck the flap one on there. You plug the flap one into the flap channel and you get this. So really on this airplane, any downgoing surface that you have, okay, um, in most places would act like a flap, okay, but um, in this airplane, it really acts like an elevator. It's going to dive the airplane. So they programmed in some up aileron to and a little bit of and a little bit of, of canard as you can see okay you can see the difference it applies them all simultaneously and when you hit the switch during flight the airplane stays steady it doesn't pitch up doesn't pitch down doesn't do anything but it just adds a bunch of drag and it assists in slowing the airplane down i don't think you really need it so much for this airplane um in fact um um it's almost kind of pointless other than just using it as a brake okay so when I first started flying this plane uh, two months ago, I noticed that um, 
it almost seemed too pitch sensitive to me. So what I did was I went ahead right off the bat after flying it once or twice um, is, is I, I changed the position of all of the horns on this thing. So to give you all an example or to show you what I did, let me put this on here. Let me see if I can close this up. Grab that set up. Um, what I did is I moved my, and I'll show you this. Notice too, when your ailerons move, they move synchronized together. Ailerons and inboard and outboard panels, they all move together. You see that for aileron? You move them to elevator, they move together. The only time they ever split is when you activate that crow feature that slows the airplane down. The down going surface, again, pitching the nose down. The up going surface is pitching the nose up. So it, it negates itself. It just acts as a brake and creates a bunch of drag is really all it does. So, but I found my plane was extremely pitch sensitive, up and down, rolling and everything. So I went down to this really low rate of like 50% or 60% or something really slow. But it's still, it seemed to have a lot of pitch control or, and roll control. It just seemed too, too sensitive to me. So all I did is to achieve 100% travel and everything uh, is what I decided to do was move all my horns in. And you could only move them in like one notch so, or one hole. So um, what I did initially with my plane right off the bat, and I'll zoom on this so everybody can see this, <clears throat> is right on this uh, flap horn, or let's call it the flap of the inboard panel. I immediately move this in one hole, okay? But the problem with moving that in one hole and then not adjusting the outer one, in fact, let me, uh, let me zoom out a little bit so you all can see what I'm talking about. If I move this out or in and didn't adjust this one, then I ended up with a kind of an asymmetry of these when I rolled and when I pitched, which is not horrible. Um, it's just that I wanted to move them in sync, okay? So there's many different ways you can set this up. I've seen some guys online who will remain nameless because I just don't want to, I don't know if anybody wants to be mentioned or not, so I'll just leave it on, where they've moved this in and left this one alone, and the plane flies fine for them. It's great. You know, I mean, if it's working well, they're good. The problem is, is I think any downgoing movement in your, this, what we're calling a flap, is just going to pitch the nose down, and it's going to require this to come up, your aileron, and then when you move your aileron, um, or when it comes up, you're going to run out of aileron quicker. So they really all, I think, should be synced together, and that's how I've been flying, and it works really well. So not only did I move this one in one, I moved this one in one, and in order to do it, you need to remove the cover. So, so what I'm going to show you now is the picture that I'm going to kind of give everybody here. I'm just going to balance this on my hand um, so everybody can kind of see this. And, and guys, you can set this up how you like. You don't, you don't have to do what I do. I'm just, you know, I'm just setting mine up the way I think it works well, and it seems to really work well here. So um, you can see here, I removed the fairing, okay, which is this outer fairing right here, okay? And I took that easy connector, and I moved it in one, which I'm going to show you right here. So by moving that in, you can see the old hole and the new hole. I had to round it out. We, me and Steve did this at the field. Now what happens is, is I'm getting a bit less throw out of both of these because it already had, to me, too much excessive. To me, it had excessive throw. It just didn't need all that. Now what happens is, is I can actually fly with my, my, my elevators and my ailerons. They're, see how they're synced together? By moving both of them together, now I have a reasonable amount of throw in there, and I have really high resolution. I mean, I can go to 100% travel now and have a lot of movement. So this is 100% travel, that's 100%. And I'm finding with roll control on this airplane, it spins around uh, on a top, man, like a dime. I mean, it spins fast, even, even when you go to a, here's a lower rate, here's another lower rate, that's in the low rate, okay? But you don't need all that travel, and it just seemed like this thing had 3D-type throws, you know, the first time I, I flew it. So, so by moving both of those in, I, I think I got the right amount of travel out of this thing. It seems to do well. 
Now, when I come into land, I don't ever use Crow because all that does is it, <coughs> your inboard panel drives the nose of this airplane down, okay? Your outboard panel brings it back up, but then your outboard panel, you're, you're out of elevator. You're running out of elevator quick. So, um, you know, some guys also made some comments that, you know, they felt like it could land the airplane slower without any flaps or crow. And it's like, well, yeah, that's, that's right. That's exactly probably how it ought to be. You know, you don't use flaps. You don't need them. Um, it's, it's not, this thing does not have flaps. Now, um, so here's the changes I made. You can see those right here. I just moved everything inboard. So, so now I have really great resolution. I have a, a good amount of elevator and an aileron. Everything is synced. I don't have any down going surface for landing, which is not helping me get in high alpha. I want to get into high alpha with it. And this setup gives me the most. I've got all the rear surfaces going up for landing. That's going to get you the most authority, you know, when you're pitching. So, so I think this is a really good setup for it. You guys can use however you want. Like I said, I know some guys are, are setting it up. So they've got a little bit of down going flap and a little up going aileron. And they're saying it's high alpha well there, and that, that's okay. But I think it's probably going to high alpha better like this with, with, with both surfaces going up. You're going to have more travel with it. Something else to consider is that if you look at, and I don't, I'm not an engineer, guys. I just fly this stuff. So, but um, if you look at a, a full scale Rafale, okay, here's one that looks like it's landing, I think. Um, and notice what's on the wing. Notice what the Rafal has on its wing, okay, that, that we don't have on the model. Can anybody tell me what that is that's on there? Okay, take a look, and if you guys are watching, uh, watching closely, tell me what does the Rafal have on this wing that our model does not have. It's obvious. It's just sitting right there. That's different. Because, you know, they have to make these models not exactly, sometimes they're not exactly, that doesn't translate everything over to the, from the full scale to the model. There's some stuff that gets lost and there's, there's something here that um, um, if you guys uh, wanna take a look at it, you know, what do you think it is that we're missing? You know, that's different. What's different from the model that the full scale airplane has? Um, uh, anybody bold, just jump right in there. There you go, save the humans, good eye. It has slats, okay? It has a leading edge device that comes down. We don't have that on this thing, okay? And here's the deal. Somebody, everybody keeps asking, like, hey, look, you know, this airplane, um, I want flaps. I want flaps to work. Well, if you have flaps come down on this model or if you have it come down, the plane's going to dive. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's an elevator, so you're not really getting anything out of it. So, but what the full scale has that this one doesn't have is it has, you can drop in the picture, you can see, you can drop flaps. Okay, as you, as you get in here. But it's also negated with some slat. So now you're turning the wing, you're curving this wing into a cambered wing. So now you can have a flap, like you see in the picture here, okay, with a slat down, and it, and it works, and it, and it gives it a cambered wing. It allows it, you know, to probably land in a better high alpha or with a, but with this model, I, I don't think any down going surface is going to help us with high alpha. It's gonna make it worse. It's gonna dive the airplane over. So. So since we're operating this thing with just rear, rear surfaces only, we're kind of stuck with just up travel, unless we want to use, you know, use it as a brake. So we can use it as a brake, as you can see here. Let me see if I can raise this, um, raise this back up. So I, I think with this Rafal from FMS, you guys can set it up in multiple different ways. I mean, there's different ways, whatever you feel comfortable with, you know, setting the wing up as. But just know that it's a pretty close version, you know what I mean? It's a pretty close, in fact, it's almost identical with the exception of this doesn't have a leading edge device like the full scale one has. So, and, and, and almost every picture I've seen, and I've never flown a Rafal, I've never flown a jet fighter, I have no idea, but when you look up pictures of this airplane, I've never seen a picture of it in flight where it has flaps extended without the slats. They're always together or I've seen it either completely clean or the airplane's flying around with just slats extended in the front edge, but not the back, because I think that's going to cause a tremendous, you know, kind of pitch, pitch down with only these tail surfaces. So I think if, 
if you're coming into land with this airplane, I think the moral of the story is, is that you really don't want this crow break, which people are kind of misconstruing as, as a flap. Because if you notice here, even at 100% travel, and even I, I have my travel reduced, you notice that, look, I have very little pitch remaining from center stick to full. That's all I have, okay, with the so-called, what people are calling flaps extended. So when I put them to zero, look at all that elevator travel that I have, okay? So now you don't have to reduce the throws like I did. I mean, you can leave them full throw if you're comfortable flying it that way and just put in some expo. That's okay too. But I have found that this plane has more than enough travel both elevator and aileron, okay, by moving the two, all four surfaces to the inner hole. So, and it seemed to work great for me that way. I mean, it's pretty awesome. The next thing you get down to is center of gravity with this airplane. And the problem we're running into is there's, there's a U.S. version of this airplane and, and there's, a, there's a European version of this airplane. So, um, uh, or an overseas version, I should, guess I should say. The U.S. version of this airplane does not come with a reflex, whereas the other ones do, okay? And the problem I was having with the reflex was not that there's anything wrong with the reflex. It was where the reflex was mounted. So you guys can see here that in order to really fly the plane well with a CG kind of aft a bit, and I've been flown, flown it forward and I've flown it aft, but everybody can see where my battery is. It's here. I'm using... Actually, this is a new strap position. This is the rear strap, and the front strap was actually all the way up here. So mounting the battery up here, your CG's at its forward limit, and it'll fly well, but it doesn't rotate very well. That's the problem. So, so and the reflex, which you guys can see right here, this is kind of important, especially for the foreign guys that are flying this, or not foreign, but the guys that are in other countries other than the U.S., this reflex was all the way back here, and it was right, like, like right here. So you couldn't push the battery past basically right here. It, you'd had to have the battery here or farther forward. Well, for high alpha and CG flying, it wasn't, it wasn't right. It didn't, it didn't work. It, it was too, I mean, you could take, you could fly it around that way and it flew great, but you couldn't get into high alpha. So what I did, this is my configuration that you guys can check out. I went ahead and I moved the receiver and the reflex up here, okay, just to get them out of the way, okay, get them up front. And then I don't even use the front strap, which was positioned in fact, if you guys can see these two little pen marks right here, that's where the front strap was. I got rid of that. And I moved these two straps back here, and then the battery mounts underneath, actually goes way back under here. So you can have sort of a mid CG range or an after CG range. So you can fly this thing in alpha, you know, fly it in some high alpha, that's all. So that's, that's what was kind of critical about this. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about with everybody, and I've already discussed this in this, these videos before that I've done, is, um, you know, rotating with this airplane. There's been guys online that have been rotating okay. I've seen some guys flying this thing um, off of grass fields, and when a grass field is bumpy, the bump helps you get up into the air, especially if you have a forward CG. Um, but... Um, but the problem I was having with this plane, if the battery is underneath those two straps and not in the back, it had a bit of a abrupt rotation because the deck angle, this airplane sits, the wing is almost flat parallel to the ground. So the wing needs to be, if you're looking at it this way, you know, the wing needs a little bit of a deck angle, um, um, especially if the CG is farther forward. If it's farther back, it's not as critical. So the next change I made, or the one of the first, actually one of the first changes I made was to the no, for the, the nose gear and the main gear. The nose gear was simple, um, and I'm going to have to take it apart to actually show you guys what exactly I did to this thing. Um, but you guys can see right here, to give the airplane a positive deck angle on the ground, so it's not sitting flat, the nose is sitting a little bit higher so we can rotate the airplane smoother. It's not, it's not required. You guys don't have to do any of this. There's guys out there flying the stock especially on a bumpy runway, if you have a grass pavement, that, that bump's going to help you get into the air. It's kind of like a little ramp. So that does help out. But if you're taking off on flat, smooth pavement, in order for me to make the rotation of the airplane really smooth, much better, I had to put a little spacer right here. So, and I've done this to other planes. You guys have seen like the MiG-29 at uh, Arrows. I did that to it too. Um, but you can see right here, what I did was I put a six and a half millimeter spacer 
six and a half because that's what I had laying around and it was the most I could extend that to. So I made my nose gear a little stronger, a little longer, I mean, and uh, by making it longer, okay, what I was able to do was to get myself a little bit more of a positive deck angle. So the nose was sitting a little bit higher because the plane was flat. That helps it rotate better. Second thing I did was I think I took, I'm trying to remember the exact amount, but I did pretty much the same thing to the main gear, but I shortened it. I just took, and this is all stuff, guys, you can do this with a, with a bandsaw, a hacksaw, a Dremel. You know, I literally cut about, about three to five millimeters off of this strut. I could have even gone shorter, but I basically shortened, okay, the main gear. That's all I did. Um, and uh, in order to do that, um, you also had to shave away just a hair of foam, okay, on the inside of this so the wheel well would fit, okay. So, so essentially all I did was made the nose gear long, longer, made the main gear shorter, okay, and now my wing, like if this is the ground, the wing sits at a plus angle off the ground. So if I measure from this, this from the leading edge down and from the trailing edge to the ground, I've got probably another, like an inch and a half here. I've got, some, I've got some angle now. And all that does is help to rotate the plane better, especially if you're flying with your battery farther forward, CG range. So is any of this necessary? No, you don't have to do any of this. You guys can buy this right out of the box and go fly it. Guys have been doing it. But these are little, little tweaks and tunes that I've done just to improve it. So one, I changed the control throws because I thought they were way too excessive for what I like to do with it. And it's now got really nice travel. Everything works well, everything does what it's supposed to do. I got plenty of, I have, in fact, <clears throat> the original travel of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, uh, of the elevators and the ailerons, it was almost like, it was almost like 3D travel. It, it was like, it was just like this. So uh, again, moving them in one hole, that was the flight control surfaces, that was one thing. Second thing I did was get that reflex out of the back. So if you guys are getting an overseas version, you're probably going to want to take that reflex and get it up here, get it out of the way, or take it out. You don't really even need it to fly, but I, I want to keep mine for the stabilization when there's wind and stuff. So, so your battery can fit back underneath this back deck, okay, and it will fit under that one strap. So you'll have a, a CG that's kind of towards the middle of the two limits that they put there. And then the third thing was taking this landing gear, making the front one taller, making the rear one short, rear one shorter, so the plane sits up like this and it just rotates a little smoother, that's all. Pretty simple stuff, it wasn't really hard to do. Um, anyway, uh, EQRC, it's a nice job, Rich. So if anybody's got any questions, just you know, fire away, because I, I, there's a lot of things I did to this, just little stuff, it's small stuff. This is hobby type stuff, guys. I'm not re-engineering the airplane or anything. I didn't redesign anything on it. I just changed the, the two holes for the four surfaces or the holes for the four surfaces. So they, they, they synchronize, okay? They're synchronized in roll, they're synchronized in pitch, and they've got much higher resolution than they originally had. Um, and understanding that, you know, your, your crow function is a speed brake, it's not a flap. So again, if you're trying to land like this, you're probably gonna run out of elevator because you can see from, from center stick back, I don't have a lot of movement there. So, because the flap is pushing the plane's nose over, the aileron is pushing the nose up, so is the, the, um, the canard. And if you just get rid of that all together, look how much up surface you actually have. You basically add your entire flap panel to pitching up, which is what's gonna get you the high alpha that you need. So. Um, and then again, changing the battery compartment stuff and then changing the gear. So, and in fact, if we wanted to do just sort of a, a look at what this is, this is something you guys can measure against your own airplane at home, if you guys have one of these, is let's take, I don't know if I have my longest ruler here. Here, let's say, all right, let's do this. I'll take this one. Let's put, let's measure from the leading edge, I'm going to measure from the leading edge here to the ground, to the table, okay? Here, let me, let me straighten this out. Actually, it's going to be hard for you guys to actually see that. But here, let's do this. I'm going to measure from the ground, okay, to the leading edge of the wing. And what I am actually getting 
is, and this is not perfect, guys, but just to get a rough idea, I'm getting 170, I'm getting about 175 millimeters from the ground to the leading edge of this wing, 170, okay? If I go to the back here and measure from the back up, okay, I'm getting from the ground to the trailing edge of the wing, I'm getting about, it looks like 145 or 150. So I've got two centimeters, two and a half centimeters roughly of difference between the leading edge and the trailing edge. Now, before I made the gear changing, it was zero, okay? So that was the issue, that was the issue I was having with a smooth rotation. So if you guys are having a problem with getting the airplane to, to rotate smoothly, if you change the length of your gear, I'll probably do a more in-depth video on this so I can specifically show you the, the actual details of everything. But that's just so you guys understand the general kind of concept of, of what I did with this thing. I didn't do anything fantastic or anything that doesn't require rudimentary tools. <laughs> I, just, I just changed the control throw so I had better resolution and not so much because it had a lot. Changed the landing gear lengths, made the nose taller, main gear shorter, which was like a little bit of hobby cutting, no big deal. And then for the, for the European guys and the guys in other countries with a reflex, taking the reflex out of here and either removing it or moving it forward so your battery can get farther back so you can get that CG where you can alpha the airplane better. That's all. So pretty simple stuff. Otherwise, plain stock. Nothing different about it. So, um, but great flying model all the way around, guys. Um, uh, Save the Human says, Rich, what expo rate are you using? Actually, I don't have any expo in the plane at all. In the videos you saw me flying this plane, I'm not using any expo at all. It doesn't need it. I mean, if you leave your rates, if you leave your travel and don't change your horns, okay, and you want all that travel in there, which is okay, if you like to fly it that way, you're, you're going to need to probably put some, some, some expo in there. Uh, I may put a little in this. I'm still actually experimenting with this plane a bit. I'm, and I'm going to play with some more things with it even too. So, so I'll probably put a little bit in there. And if I do, because I almost hardly use it. Um, so, you know, guys, um, and actually Spencer Keith is on there. He's one of the guys. I think Spencer, I saw his videos. See, like he's flying his totally stock. He, he, I don't think he changed the thing on his. And his is, his is flying for him just fine. Um, I think he says he absolutely loves it straight out of the box. So he's flying it right out of the box without any problem. Some of the videos I saw Spencer doing, though, he's got a little bit of a bumpy grass field, which is great. You can fly this thing off of grass. But, but it, it's the bumps that's kind of helping his nose get up into the air. You know, bumping, bumping. You know, if he was on a smirk, in fact, Spencer, let me know if you get a chance to take your plane out to flat cement, okay, just perfectly flat cement. I don't know if you've done it yet and see how the rotation is. If you're not having any problems with it, then it's probably okay. Mine was rotating off of pavement flat, but it was a little abrupt. I just didn't like the abruptness of it. So that's why I changed my nose gear, made it a little longer, took my main gear, made it a little shorter, and then it makes the rotation a little smoother. I just wanted to make it better than it was. So, so uh, yeah, Spencer, if you're watching it, let me know if you've tried it on pavement or not. So um, the other thing that's going to make it really hard to rotate this airplane, like I think we already mentioned it, if you're using both of those factory straps, okay, which you can, um, you're going to be right at the forward limit of the CG. The plane flies beautifully at the forward limit of the CG. It just doesn't rotate very well. It doesn't get off the ground all that well. So that's just something you got to think about. Uh, Ian says, um, I'm amazed that with all these wonderful RC planes, there's nobody has come out with a parachute system in case... Uh, signal loss or human error. Yeah, well. Uh, <coughs> let's see. I've added a second servo to the canards. Now I have ailerons and elevators. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, um, I know a lot of guys who have, um, like when they, like some guys have the grip in, I guess, and um, they've removed the aileron feature and just made it pitch because it doesn't really, they say it doesn't really do a whole lot. So, um, because they're kind of not very far from the center and it's more of a pitch type thing rather than a roll type thing. But, you know, hey, whatever works. There's so many. When you have a delta wing jet like this, guys, with surfaces in the back and canards, you can mix things a lot, like, very differently and make it kind of how you want it. So there's, there's a lot. There's no right or wrong answer necessarily to setting this up. But there is some kind of logic to doing one thing a certain way and doing it another way versus, you know, one way or another. So, so, um, so when folks tell you, oh, it's flying perfectly, well... 
it just depends on how you like it to fly perfectly. You know, it depends on how you like it set up. So, um, but I just think that, um, I just think that, um, you know, um, using your, your control synchronized the way mine are, um, moving them in a notch, getting a little more resolution out of everything in torque. Okay. It really smoothed out the control surface for me without having to use any expo. So, um, um, and then, and then again, the crow brake function, it's a crow brake. It's not a flap. Any down moving surface on this, like you see in the picture I have here without slats, any down moving surface back here, it's going to nose the airplane over. It's just going to dive it. So having this down, I don't think is really helping much with, with, um, with, with high alpha. It's actually making it worse. You're just, you're running out of elevator. You see that you're running out of elevator sooner. So that, that's all. But guys, set up how you like it. Like like um, like uh, like uh, Spencer Keith said, his is flying great stock out of the box. He's flying his with the battery under the compartment, so he's got a good aft CG. He's got a bumpy runway, so it's it's helping that nose bump into the air, and he's he's taking off well, and uh, he likes it the way it is. Um, uh, Spencer, if you're there, let me know what kind of expo you're using um, on yours, because I just I just didn't didn't use any on mine. I just didn't think it needed it you know, with the throw where I had it. So, um, and, and guys will be talking about that. Like I said, it's, uh, there's more than one ways to set this thing up, folks. It's, uh, you know, there's a couple different ways to do it. So, um, but anyway, uh, that's it for the refall. Any questions you guys got, go ahead and throw it out. I use, uh, high expo numbers and 3d throws. That's fine. Yeah. Use what you like guys. Uh, set it up how you like it. Um, usually when I put expos in planes, it doesn't feel comfortable to me. It feels, I feel disconnected from the plane. I, I like to have, I'm not sort of a, what you call a center stick flyer. When you fly just in the middle, you know, the stick, you don't move it very much. You like it to respond very quickly without any mushiness in the middle. So that's just kind of how, that's my, my control feel. You, you, everybody's is kind of different. So set it up how you like it. But, but anyway, that's the gist of it. Just to sum it up again, I reduced my control throws by moving all four of my servo horns in. You guys can go back and see the pictures I put up. Um, that gave us, um, gave me really good resolution. And um, know that the, the, the spoilers or the, uh, the flaps are not really flaps. They're just a crow brake to slow the darn thing down. Um, your battery um, really needs to be under this deck and not using those two straps, you know, unless you want to fly towards the forward limit of your CG. And then, you know, if you want a little assistance in rotation to make it a little smoother, lengthen your nose gear by adding a little spacer shorten your main gear by cutting them off a little bit. You're gonna have to do a little trimming, you know, to the, to the inside of the, I mean, it took a few seconds to do, uh, to the, cause the wheel now is shorter and you just have to just shave, take two seconds to shave a little foam. So the wheel fits in there properly. And now you'll have a positive deck angle that the plane rotates a lot better. So you guys can make that call how you want to do it. I will do probably a more in depth video into those mods for anybody that really wants to make that change. And I can kind of show you that. Uh, Save the Human says he likes to add a soft center and, and rad on the edge. Yeah, and that's cool. See, I like mine linear. From the center out, I like it to be consistent. I don't like the soft in the center. Now this plane, I might put a little bit in it, but most planes, I don't, I don't need it. I, I like it to be kind of quick response and stuff, so. Uh, what is your CG number, he said? I'm actually flying mine, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, where is that thing? Let me see here. They call for one. Oh, here it is. Let me see. They call for 110 to 130. And I fly mine at probably about 120, kind of right in the middle. Um, and I'm still exploring it. I'm still playing, playing with it some more. So, you know, I'll be doing some more things with it. Um, but, uh, yeah, right about in the middle of there seems to be a good place you know, roughly, um, maybe towards the back. So, uh, but anyway, let me run through a couple other things here, guys. Um, uh, let me see what we got. Uh, we talked about all that. Uh, we talked about the aggressor a little bit. I think I'm going to go to guys. We've been here for four hours and there's still guys here. So, but I'm going to head out cause I got to have dinner. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, we talked about all this, this stuff. Um, I'm just going to reiterate a couple of things, folks. Um, 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 you know, Banana Hobby's got a lot of really nice planes. Uh, Save the Human said thanks. Yep, appreciate that. Um, 
Uh, Banana Hobby's got a nice series of these 1100 millimeter warbirds out now, you know, so um, um, we've got the Spitfire, um, the V22, we've got the two, the P40 now and the T28. There's more 1100 more millimeter warbirds coming um, from Banana Hobby, so, you know, check it out. Uh, more 105 millimeter jets coming uh, as well. And um, um, I'm going to have videos for you guys on the T28, the P40 I put together today, and um, on the Aggressor here soon. And actually, we're going to do more on the V22, so stay tuned. We're going to have those out there. Uh, more Rafale videos are coming. I'll get some more out, you know, when I get out to the field uh, here soon. And, uh, you know, we'll probably go this weekend and fly it some more, so... Air Hammer says dinner time. Yeah, I'm getting ready to have more Slim Jims. No, I'm going to have some regular food now. Uh, but yeah, thanks everybody for coming. And just to reiterate, one more time, these events are coming up. Stay tuned. We're going to have postings about this. we got more stuff coming out. CEF 2021, thanks to you guys using my links in the description below. All our vendors above, all these dealers above, have given us like four or five airplanes to take to these events. So we're going to CEF. We'll be there the whole week, me and Amy. So come meet Amy. Um, and we'll have giveaways. We got five airplanes, four to five airplanes for both events to give out. We got glue. Ray's throwing in afterburners to give away. Um, um, Beacon Adhesives is providing a bunch of glue. Zap, I think, maybe, too. Um, and um, Ernst is going to give us some plane stands. Roaring Top's going to be selling batteries. Flex Innovations at the top, man. You know, they're going to have stuff. Horizons, we're going to be parked next to Horizon. I'll have banners everywhere. So, so uh, EQRC said time to eat. Yeah, I'm going to go too. Great show. Yeah, okay. Sold me on the Jolly Rogers uh, pushing button tomorrow. Hey, thanks for going through my link, Eric, to do it. And uh, come see us at the events. And then, of course, once again, guys, after Seth, the Pilot Ryan event, which is taking up the slot of Joe Nall, will be there. Same thing. Lots of airplane giveaways and stuff. So, um, you know, come check it out. Um, we'll be there with Wesley flying and lots of airplane giveaways, guys. It's going to be fun. Lots of stuff. Uh, so come on, guys. Come check it out. Stay tuned. Come join the event. We're trying to um, kind of beat out the COVID thing here and, uh, and get, everybody, uh, get everybody flying again. So, guys, once again, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing, sharing my videos, and hitting that notification bell. Um, and that like button, guys. I do appreciate everybody coming today. We'll have more coming. Stay tuned to the channel, and uh, I will let you guys all go. I appreciate you guys watching once again big time. And as always, guys, RC Informer, we'll see you guys next time.